ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਰਤਨ ਦੇ ਅਰੀਬਲ ਸ਼ਾਪ ਐਲ ਸੀ ਰੋ ਕੀ ਮਸ਼ਾ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਤਾਂ ਜਿੰਦਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਸੋ So uh, the last one again that was there was around the 1920s was it 1930 yeah. yeah. well, 1928 1925 yeah so it was mostly women you'd have at that market was it Is there any other agent there that used to come from Bellingham? Yeah. That's the fellow, that's the fellow. You come around the English thing here, not the usual. But English was the foreman of the whole day, I do. Yeah. Is there still any that We never saw any that there. So, you must have been down there, were you? <laughs> that's, that's where you lived in the, uh, the class, was it? Yeah. Well, I didn't have any sports down there. Yeah. It was open long before he came then, was it? Yeah. It's easy. And this here is Merton Tahar's Sheebin, or was. Today it is the property of Patrick Scanlon Caramoa Sheebin. Post office. Did you ever hear of uh, McVeigh's? I think so. Or McVeigh's? I think they got from the top of McVeigh's. Yeah. Did you hear of uh, Sheebin there at Paddy Scanlon? I did. He was in Latin Tower, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. That's just laughed in my mind. I'm quite a kid. Yeah. I read in the title of the Peter Green Justice. Did I? I did. It was the front of the Peter Black. Yeah. Was he going for America in the morning, as they say? No, he wasn't. But, uh, oh, yeah, I was with him. Yeah. But first of all, laughing, seized by another venture. Yeah. Could be crafted. There's a man's fucking maybe killing my baby. Yeah. So it was around then, was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. And uh, how did they dispose of the body? I don't think it was ever found, did they? Oh, they did. They were going to throw it out in the river, and then they brought it in. They might say, no, I don't know what they all know. Are you... You think they didn't do what they did? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. They didn't throw it into the Macedonian thing, did they? Yeah, I know. Of course, I didn't. They didn't. They didn't. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's all Macedonian. And this in front of us here is Macedonian Hill. Called after John Macedonian, who lived in here on the left. And this is the site of his house in here on the left. Across from 
children in the townland of Claremore. There's a storeroom and a store here and a dwelling house. And on the right hand side of the road here, this is the dairy. Oh, that was it now there. That, that, that one. Well, it was a new one, that was planned to begin, but that was it. Did you re roof it again now? Yeah, well I didn't, but we roof. There was place there, wasn't it? Stay it was dangerous, I think, you know. I, and, and, and. Hi. So that was it? Yeah. And it was a, there was an old mill down there. Sure, sure, what the fellas are walking, you see? Two yeah. of the two are walking across the other side. That was yeah. The other side of the, that's the, see the bank on the far side of them there? Yeah. But well, that was the mill race behind that bank and it was going down there. The mill was there somewhere, you know. Yeah. And the river was what was going down in that mill that that day. What kind of a mill do you think it was? I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was called. Cordon or black? Probably for cordon because you see the, the the two wheels. There was one wheel up there's one wheel down there in our field, covered it's covered with size. Yeah. And there's another one down in Paddy Scandon field up a bit there beyond the Yeah. And they're probably cordon, you know, because they were yeah. they, they were they, they were part of a grinding cordon, I'd say, you know. Nice day, I suppose, that a Mike V that would have that there, wouldn't it? I say it was. Yeah. Yeah. I say it was. Because that was his land one down here. It was, know. indeed. See the... the yeah. No. Yes. Uh, ben oh, this here is the home of Bernard Dugan, Caramoa. Get it now, didn't they? How did they get it? No, they... The boss. The didn't the bank buy it? Or didn't the land commission buy it from the bank or something? Or well, they all joined up or something yeah. like that. And the land commission bought it for the land and the boat. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> the man was gone bankrupt or something. Yeah. I think the bank was going to sell it. So the, 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 the land commission stepped in and bought it for them. I think that's what yeah. happened. Yeah. So there'd be more than your father involved? There was a lot of work involved before that, right? Yeah. There was a lot of work involved before that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't still around. Call Ailey if you want to know. I do the sentence of one. Yeah. Cast. Cast. Ah. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Tony Keith Yeah. William Eadley was involved. Wasn't William Eadley involved? Yeah. Baird and Hill or something. No, he was some kind of... Oh, he was he was a bailiff on the land. He was he was he was a bailiff for them. And he he tried to take over the land or something to get it. You know, on the on the home somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And they I think they must have tumbled to it. You know that he was doing it. I think they or the cat laughed or something, didn't they? Mm -hmm. and, and I went to the bank and bought it, you know. Yeah. I went to the land commission, yeah. got the land commission to buy it. Yeah. Forgotten, the land was in it too, you know what? Yeah, well, it was in the old school house yeah, in the school, yeah. Yeah, on the way back there. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is one of these. Right. It probably causes downfall in the inn. Yeah. Well, when we were young there, that house was there. Oh, that, 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 the only thing the road wasn't down it. Yeah. And all, yeah, all, all the bit. I, I bought a load of them, we yeah. bought a load of them stones out for chair yeah. and gate for putting in drains and everything. Yeah, yeah. a few of them were up the fuck. You said the demolished it, our local people, it wasn't the land commission of the demolished Ah, no, no, no. no. I'll take them bits out of them. No, no, yes. I suppose when Tony Cairn, if we got it all, I suppose they bought it. Was the roof on that thing when Tony Cairn got it? Twas, yeah. How long ago, have you any idea with that day that they made that deal? Oh, 1922, wasn't it? 1922, this house was built here anyway. Yeah. And and this house, my father came living here, you see, then. He was living in Finalahan. And uh, he, he came living here and they built that house. Yeah. So it was around that time, you know, they got yeah. the land. Around 1920 or 22, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah. This here is the wicked, the servant's entrance up to Canmore House. Now the people of Bohol that worked in Canmore estate came up across the marsh here up these fields crossed over the road here and into this wicked servant's entrance and up the lawn. Uh, yeah, more house. And this here is the wicked one that had a red door, now the colour is different. It has a cheaper model. Now up this lawn. Got a more house. Once the home of the panels and the comics and now Robbie Buckley's there.
Palmer House. The nation thirty years to put the home of Roger Palmer. Around sixteen forty one they ever passed home of the four of us, eh? I'm not sure who built the present day house. Samuel Crozier McCormick, the lawyer, must have uh but he was here before eighteen ninety eight and he wasn't here in eighteen fifty six. Samuel was born in 1852 and died in 1911. He lived to be 79 years. He is buried in Rafael Cemetery. Uh, he was also involved in the history of Kerala with H.C. Box in sorting out the Kirkwood dispute. This was a profitable adventure for both lawyers and disasters for the Kirkwoods. Sam had a son called Nile. He also lived up here. He was a farmer. He gave much employment to the people of Povel and Bacon. He offered much assistance to the farmers by Lending uh, them horses and shifters and hay cutting machines and other uh, barrier tools. Those who were obliged by him were paid in some ways by giving an odd day's labor saving on the harvest. He also gave away medicines and cures for uh, cattle and animals and also people. Uh, and with much success. He also started and got going the Lacken Piper, uh, the Lacken Pipe Band. They had bag pipes, side drums, kettle drums, and a big drum. Members were Philip Madden, who was pipe major, Woody Nealon, Donald McCormick, Patrick Nealon, Paddy Brady, Willie Boyd, Willie Buck, Ned Gorman, Sonny Buck, and Mickey McHale. This band reached a high standard when I remember all the times they played and how well they paraded in comparison with the army bands I've seen parading at Salt Hill festivals over 25 years ago. This band was in existence from about 1943 until 1950. They performed at local football matches, Berenay, Fashion and Memorials in Bellicastle. Uh, many of the members in later years drank too much, something which Dan McCormick was totally opposed to. It brought to an end the lack of high band of instruments. Nile was the sole uh, promoter and organizer of this band. I can remember Nile as a benevolent man in the community, for which he is not well remembered today. In 1838 there were 24 families in this townland of Caramoa. In 1856, there were only seven families. The famine, in one way or another, got rid of 17 families. Today, there are only four families here, including the McCormick. And this here is Caramore House, a typical landlord's house, probably built by the Palmers. Later, home of McCormick, and now Robbie Burke is there. And this is the lawn, and over there in the distance is the new house in which uh, resides Donald McCormick and family. And here was the main entrance, Caramore Gates, into Caramore House and the avenue leading up to it. There's another view of the new house built by Donald McCormick, modern day dwelling. And here is the cemetery in which um, Samuel Crozier McCormick lies and his son Nile. Um, born 1832, Samuel died 1911. And uh, Nile is not so long buried there. Uh, 1980, Nile died. view of our friend's cemetery, where they are. Levin Pipe Band. Philip Levin, Old Pipe Major, Niall McCormick, the promoter. Willie Needham of Kilgarry, Ned Gorman of Kerala, who was an army drummer at one time, Donald McCormick of Caramoa, Sonny Buck of Castellacken, who was the big drummer, Patrick Needham of Kilgarry.
Michael McHale of Little Brown, who was a side drummer. Paddy Brady of Little Brown. And Willie Buck of Bela Sala. He was now departed. Black and Pipe Band. Organised by Niall McCormick and Cannonball. On the left here is the Caramore estate and uh, on the right is Ratlachy, the port of Ratlachy, one time property of Hammers. You can see that one on the left there, the Caramore estate in the Cormac land. And there is the view of Ratlachy. This road was made, I think, in the 1920s. And uh, on the left of this river that comes down here to the bushes is, is a drone. Left of that wall there. And over here is Paramore Townland. But it is called after this fort over here, Ratbristan. It would mean the fort of the Breslin. Probably occupied by a Breslin family in olden times. Now, about 200 yards towards uh, the strand down here was an old village which disappeared during famine times. You can see the track of the river there. It was there in 1838, seven or eight houses, and in 1856 they had disappeared. Probably disappeared during the famine years. This uh, townland extended up here by this river, away up here, north was towards, not north was, but west was towards Baden Hill. It's an area of furs and bushes and rough land. It goes away up here as far as I can. This is called Rabrishlan, although it is Caramore townland. And this road over here now is reasonably new. Now, this is where we are now. That is the northern uh, end of the townland. And that point there points out the river that we were looking at running through the bushes a few minutes ago. It runs all the way down to meet the Clonarhan River. On the left side of that was the uh, the drone. And this is the new road made, I suppose, around the 1920s, I'm not too sure. Now at this turn here, I think it met with the ancient road coming down from Baden Hill. down there. It is all wooded and uh, full bushes today. But there is an ancient road up there somewhere. And down ahead here is the Caramore House. Uh, farther east and then bushes. In here to the left went down the old roadway to the village down by the river that disappeared during famine times. And further down there is Brat Bristown, the Brazilian port. See there's a track of a roadway there, going down to the old village which no longer exists. Now that old village was down where these trees are growing in the distance there and full bushes. Uh, 
further over is the woodland up. Down there is the site of some old houses and foundations and relics. And uh, Paddy McHale tells me that uh, an old roadway went down by that river coming out at Caligari, Caramore boundary. Probably used to serve the villagers that lived here at one time. Now, down there is the red tide roof. Uh, this road we see going down there is uh, rather new. There is the red tide roof of the new uh, Charm, uh, new McCormick's house, and there is the site of the old Charmore house. This land all around here, over as far as the river on the left, belonged to Palmer's McCormick. Now many of the Kiligiri people own it. Now it went out, had a more town and went out to meet that river we saw there in the distance. Called Clunalhan River, well, flows into Lacan Strand. And up here is the west side uh, rough country, grazing land. Full of fur. of this uh, shed at the strand was a two-storied house. It was one time a yeoman barracks and later on a post office around 1920. That shed there would be roughly about the situation of it. Now after 1920 the post office wasn't there anymore. It was up in Caramoa, the old house. Right on the left here of the old post office around 1920 or there about 18. And later on, it moved to the year of Mugodden here. Uh, the post office was here across where people call it where Mugodden's barrels are shed yeah, today. The post office was in Mugodden's old house there, of course. I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't remember it either. I only remember it in the, in the present house. Uh, before that, the donut stand on Park the Bellshop. Oh, I know, yeah. Well, um, uh, who was the last who was in it? I think it was McGordon that was in that shed there, wasn't it? Was it Anthony? Yeah. Was it Anthony? Uh, James. James. Yeah. James. He was also teaching in the school, wasn't he? Was yeah. yeah. That's the old school at the back. Yeah. Some of the family or something, I think, or something. Three or four of them. 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 New post office for you. Thank you. Was it a date of it? Before 1930, was it? Yeah, I thought it was before. What is it? Don't come to that. No, it's not one before. It's a little bit. Oh, yeah, close enough. Moving up now to the site of. Carmel Palmer School of 1836. Anthony McGordon taught here. He came all the way out from Carmel Sean until he built his own house down here where the old post office was. He must have taught here for about 50 years or more and after him came his son, James. James was teaching there I know in 1914, maybe in the 1880s too. They must have had very little holidays. I can see entries in registers for the old school dated 4th, 6th and 18th of August. They must have been working through most of the month of August. It must have been all work for no play. There were pupils here from Fohl, Banhur, Belsa, not Bohol. 
Now in 1836, the public school was here for 60 pupils, endowed with a £29 a year grant by Mrs. Palmer. And she lived down in the bushes there in Caramore House. Anton McGordon taught here according to Canon Michael of Kilala with distinction. His name his claims is still a legend in Lacken. His sons were John, James, Tom and his daughters were Kate and Bridget. All became teachers as well. Among those who passed through his hands were three who later became priests. Tom O'Hara, William McGordon, Pat Keevney. His son James later taught here. And uh, he also owned the post office, the old post office down there. Now there were also pupils here from Clunanas, Palmerstown, Turin. Uh, the Neelands were stewards in Caramore at the time and they sent their family up here in 1896. And there were also Neelands shopkeepers around Caramore because they had children going to this particular school. And there we see the boundary going up there to the left. On the left of that boundary is Banner Lake. Down by the stream here is Caramore, right of it is Baden the Lake. Left of that house is Caramore. There is the site of the old post office and the residence of the McGurns before they moved in the 1920s across the road here. Pat and across here from the post office over to um, Ballymurphy and on towards Bally Castle because people did most of the travelling on foot in those days. Now there's a stream that goes down there uh, towards Palmer's Town, uh, towards Clunalhan River, towards the bridge, and that is the boundary. It goes between the post office and Bobby Zoe. Alan Malek, the town of the flags, or the town of the fold of the flags. <coughs> and there we see 218 acres almost of it, as it was in 1838. Now, here would be the path from the post office across to Ballamorphy. And there would be the path from McDonald's of Banalek meeting that one. And there's the site of old McDonald's house, and the site of uh, a herd's house that was there across from it, and the site of Mickey Scanlon's Ford, Ford or Smithy, Peter Scanlon he was called later, and there was the site of the uh, herd's house built by um, Samuel Crozier McCormick for uh, Paddy Healy's father. Paddy Healy was his name. When he managed to evict him from the old herd's house that was built just across from McDonald's. And this stream here, right of this stream is Banner Lake. It comes down to the Karakanas Road here, crosses the river, and that little piece of land left of the river there. And this uh, shown here, on the right of the road is Banner Lake. The site of the quarry is up along this river zone. Now, this is where uh, Boyd's old houses, and by this hedge here is a stream, the townland boundary a stream. Running down to Cronallahan River. Banner Lake. <laughs> and this is uh, where the site of the old smithy was. By the stream here, this ditch on the right here, left of that is Ballin and Lake, right of it is Caramore. Caramore land the other side of that fence, Ballin and Lake here. All up here, this is the road. From here on up is Ballin and Lake. And on the left here was the site of the smithy. Peter Scanlon, he was known I think as Mickey Scanlon's Ford, or he was known as Mickey Scanlon. Scanlons are here today, just fair not. In there somewhere was the site of his, of the site of his Ford. 
he's down on the valuation of 1856 to get that valuation as Peter Scan, but I think the local people called him Mickey. Yes. Now in here on the left is the Scanlon household. Peter Scanlon lived there. This is, I think, the only road going through the town under Barnley Lake. Here on the right, as we see it, is Caramore School, situated in the townland of Barnley Lake. <coughs> this piece of land was given to them by the McCormick's, the Niall McCormick, to build this school here. There was a tradition there, the Palmers and McCormick's giving them land for school building and their sites. Barnley Lake. According to O'Donovan, comes from Bailon and Licky, town of the flag. We bail on the Yak, the town of the flags. In 1838, it contained 217 acres. It was owned by Roger Patmore of Caramore House. Tenants held at the rent of 1.5 and 9 pence an acre. They grew the usual crops of both flax and potatoes. There were 24 Catholic families here. In 1856, the major lesser was Captain Phibbs. Uh, also, uh, a Michael who had four uh, acres and leased it to Timothy Kilgray as a tenant. Other tenants were John McAvey, who had 122 acres rented, Reverend Peter Neely, who had 28 acres rented, and had a herd house. Say that herd house is probably that one up there. It isn't the one, but uh, one was built later, I'd say, in that area. Peter Scanlon, 19 acres. Michael Ford, 42 acres. Timothy Kilgray, 4 acres. Michael Ford, one cottage without land. Now, Matt and Darcy owned this town land <coughs> in 1641, according to Simington's Book of Survey and Distribution. <coughs> so this house down here is Scanlon's. Down below that, <coughs> Around 1872, <coughs> maybe long before that, there was a forge there that belonged to a man named Scanlon. He had a child going to a Caramore Primer School farther down near the post office. Now Peter Scanlon was a tenant here in 1856, so he probably was the smithy that owned the forge down there, just below that house there. This is Caramore School in Ballinalake. This here is Caramore School, built in the year 1933, and up there is a shelter, which was not there in my time, 1945 to 1952, and uh, I see some nice murals painted on the walls there. And up there is the house Samuel Crozier McCormick built for Paddy Healy. Down there is the yard, the school yard. Here's the main entrance. It wasn't the main entrance in my time. It was down around the corner there. This school was built in 1933. And uh, the first teacher in here, I think, was Paddy Glacken. And after him came Sean Burke, who is now dead a few years, he came from Heathfield, and a few pupils gained a few county council scholarships and made a civil service, but in 1922, uh, 1952 got really going when Jerry McNulty and myself won two Gaelic scholarships to uh, prepare the college in Galway, and from then on were able to qualify, and many more followed. Then after him came Finan Burke, and now Paddy Laden is in here. Now this school here was built uh, after the other one. 
from the pan but contributed the site also. The other one was down in that direction near the post office. The Pamers and McCormicks have been very helpful in providing sites and schools for this area. This is a health house. In 1856, Peter Mary had one rented here from Captain Fibbs. It was probably situated down there. Later on, there was a Paddy Healy here, and Samuel Crozier McCormick used his legal knowledge to take away his squatter's rights. He built him a new house, and then he had him put out of it when he couldn't pay the rent. Whereas he couldn't have put him out of the old one. He had squatter's rights. Your father was a carpenter here, up until when? 1933. 1933. He, uh, yeah. And that's where the old uh, hub house was down there, for the kid there. Yeah. And this was the one that he was able to uh, evict. The one he moved him into. Yeah, and the one he moved him out of too, wasn't it? The one he moved him out of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, your father, who did he do the carpentry work for? Was it for the McCormick? Uh, no, he did not. I didn't get to do it. Oh, well, a general man around the place. He for McCormick, too, right? Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. And you're about to move over here now, aren't you? Yes, in the near future. Yeah, yeah. Possibly. <laughs> This is the road that goes through Barron and Lake. <coughs> Left and right of this road. Goes way up past that bend there. But now you can see the boundary fence on the left going away down. The other side of that fence, the far side, is Barron Hill Lower. This fence goes away down to meet the river that comes down by Carrick Road. And down somewhere there is the site. This is the other side now of the road. Now up here is the townland boundary fence. On the right of that is Bandelect. On the left side there is Barn Hill Upper. <coughs> and up there is Achi Clock, or the site of the Stone House, as mentioned by O'Donovan in 1838. Now this is January of 84. It looks cold and it is cold. We are on Barn Hill upper here. The far side of the ditch there of the fence is Barn Elect. Looking out there at it on the right. On the left here is Barn Hill Upper. And that ditch there right of it is Barna Lake. That ditch is the townland boundary of Barna Lake. And on the right hand side is uh, uh, Barna Lake. This area in here is called Achi Clough. Harachi Clough, the site of the stone house, and there we see it, stones sticking up out of the ground. Maybe it is the ruins of an old house, or uh, maybe it is the ruins of a pre-Christian burial. This area around here uh, would be called Achi Clough in 1838. There's another look at it. Donalds of Bandalek, and by this house went a pathway that met the other pathway coming from the post office, both going towards Ballymurphy. Now I'm told people going to the bog took this direction. Now across here is the site of uh, the first head house, our uh, head's house that was here by Reverend Peter Neary, and there's the site of the second one built by Samuel Crozier. <coughs> now Paddy, old Paddy Healy was in this old site across the road here 
as a herd and he hates Waters right and uh, McCormick wanted to get him out I think we told the story before and so he built him a new one and then he was able to evict him now this is the road one and only down to Barnelet and it ends just here at this bend right here we're looking down to the town end of Caramore where we were before and where I omitted some information about this school here there we see the site and extent of the playground that was uh, that Caramore Palmer School had and I'm told that it was there in 1820 another look at the site of the Palmer Schoolhouse Now this is a daily report book or a page from the daily report book of the school that was situated uh, in this area that we have been talking about. And there we see the name Caramore Palmer National School, the road number 6942, parish of Lacken County Mill and the electoral area Lacken South. In the barony of Tirari, the nearest post office town was Caramore. Yeah, well it had been with Lacken too, I think, as I mentioned there, and the area five and three quarters square uh, purchase, built in the year 1877, and uh, a shilling a year was paid as rent to R.C. Palmer of Caramore and by the manager. And there we see that the uh, precise date of opening as a school, 1820. So it was there before 1877 as a national school. And we see uh, internal dimensions of each room, 40 feet, and the internal breadth, 16 feet. And the uh, external dimensions of the house, 44 feet, and the external breadth, 20 feet. And the height of the walls up to the eave, 12 feet. And they uh, had uh, some furniture there too. Number of desks and firms, seven. Eight foot long. And separate firms, six of them. No committee. And no meetings held. And uh, Reverend Hugh Conway, living the parish priest living down at the Strand, was the manager. The teacher had no residence. Yeah. Some data on the Caramore Palmer School. One of the pages from the daily report book for the year 1889. and there we see it, 144 
acres of it. Now there's the road that goes up through Banner Lake and separates Ban Hill Lower from Ban Hill Upper. It's 200 feet over sea level. And there's a river or a stream that runs down through it. And uh, there are stepping stones used by people that use the footpath way over from Barry Murphy over to the post office in Terramore. And there's the site of a port or an ancient settlement. There's another look at the shape of Barn Hill. And the boundary is down there between Barn Lake and Barn Hill. Ban Hill Lower on the left hand side of the road here. This house here is Dennis Langans. He was a stonemason and built many houses. He built uh, uh, my father's house and this was drawn around 1938. On the right hand side of the road, Ban Hill Upper. On the left, Ban Hill Lower. This is a uh, house here, is one of the many McGee's houses in this townland. And this is a McGee house also. Baron Hill is also named from the little top, Barnin, or a gap in the mountains, Barn. Now that mountain top or Barn would be in Barn Hill Upper, at the peak of the mountains, I suppose. It would hardly be situated in Barn Hill Lower. There's a road going up to Baron Hill Upper. Baron Hill Lower. The contour done when it came from there is for Bardneen. It means little top or Bardneen or little gap. Could be a gap in a hilltop or a gap in a mountain top. It has 144 acres of land. It was in 30, 1838 the property of Sir William Palmer. His agent was John Heaviside of Thirteen Hollow Street, Dublin. And P. Noran of Mine Kilala was the other agent. Now, Baron Hill Lower is way down here. That side of this road here. Tenants in 1838 paid 30 shillings an acre annually. 30 families lived here in 1838. They were all very poor. The crops were roast barley and potatoes. In 1856, according to the Griffith valuations, the tenants were Patrick Mahan, Patrick Kennedy, Mary Ford, Mary Ford, Bridget Carden, Hugh Neary, Bridget McGee, James Jordan, Mary O'Hara, Thomas Kinhart, and John McAndrew. Uh, much the same as the townland of Barrow. Well now, 30 families lived here in 1838. Only, lovely, on, only 11 families were left after the famine in 1856. It was much the same as the townland of Barrow that had only 25 families in 1838 and only 5 after the famine in 1858, and today, in 1983, there's only two. Baron Hill has two or three families here today. Townland boundary going way down there. Baron Hill, lower. Over there on the right, Larry Murphy. There's the town and boundary, that fence going down there, all the way to the river. And there are stepping stones down there in the fort. There's a river here, and somehow it's hardly up there. Yeah, 
and stepping stones. Now the path went down by the river here, on the left hand side. And there is a fort, an ancient settlement. The bushes up there in the distance is where the road is situated. Settlements like this were from 15, uh, up to 1500 uh, AD. Now down by the river there on the left hand side the path went. The path from Ballymurphy uh, into Caramore and in through that depression there through the fort. Right through it. And down for Caramore. Now there that black line going down there is the river. It's the townland boundary. Baden Hill Lower in there. That's Bally Murphy, the one and only house in it, McAndrews. People did a lot of walking in those days, and they took the shortest cut through the fields. Hence the path from Bally Murphy to the post office. <coughs> Baron Hill Upper, named from the little top. Oh, the little gap in the hilltop, 400 feet over sea level, and that's what it looks like, 373 acres. That's the road between, on the right, upper, Baden Hill Upper, and on the left, Baden Hill Lower. Now, the road doesn't go out that far. It goes there, and that area is called Sweep, from there in. And there's an old road up to the old village of Baden Hill, and uh, there's the site of an ancient fort or settlement, and there was another road running up there too. That one is in fairly good repair. There are many little roads in the townland. There's the situation of the old village. Of course there would be a lot of houses, 37 of them scattered all around there. There wouldn't be big houses, there would be small. There's the size of a, site of a trigonometrical point, and here's a contour line 400 feet over sea level. Now in that area there is the site of an old fort or an ancient burial ground. It may have been pre-Christian. And this is the road that separates uh, the upper town land of Baden Hill from the lower town land of Baden Hill. Passing by Dennis Langans on the left. We had been on this road before doing Baden Hill Lower. Geese, I think. Now there were 35 houses up here on the right in 1850. Well, in 1838, only 21 in 1856. 14 of them had disappeared during the famine years. And there's another new house built by one of Dennis Lang and Sons one of the few new houses that have been built in this townland. Very few of the old names of 1856 survive here. And there's one of the old roads leading up to the old village. Very much disused today.
and here's another one of them that lit up there or lit up to uh, the old village of course there are many little roads up at 400 at the level of 400 feet over sea level a lot of little roads moving through it, some of them leading on to Bella Castle and more of them out to Lissadrone and of course this town ran on the way out to Lissadrone Bog and back towards the Academic Town and Cacullan and there's the side of another roadway to the right there and here we are coming on to now to the area which is known as Sweep Now, uh, Baden Hill goes beyond this road there for a little distance and over here. That's looking at it from west to east. The townland of Baden Hill, upper. And up here in this area, way up in the fields there, is this site of a, either a fort or a burial ground which has not been registered. But named after the little top or little gap, Bordenheim. Now, that could be it over there, or over here. I'd say it's over there. It is 400 feet over sea level. It has 373 acres. In 1838 it had. It belonged to Sir Bedlo Palmer. His agent was P. Nolan of mine. Uh, it had 120 acres of uncultivated land. The remainder supported 35 families. They were all Roman Catholics and they paid £70 pound annually in rent. In 1856, according to the Griffiths valuations, there were 21 families here. 14 families had disappeared during the famine years. Sir W. Roger Palmer, the baronet, owned it. The tenants were Anthony Cairn, he had ten and a half acres, rented. Anthony Cairn, seven acres. Thomas Kelly, sixteen and a half. Thomas Kelly, thirty acres. Thomas Kelly, eighteen acres. Anthony Cairn, sixteen and a half acres. Another Thomas Kelly, eleven and a half acres. Patrick Mahon, eight acres. Hugh Neary, he may have been a brother of Father Peter, Reverend Peter Neary. He had a land and a health house, he had 13 acres. Michael Kilcullen, 20 and a half acres. Hugh Neary again, same man, he must have a second hold on here, 23 and a half acres. Michael Kilcullen, land and health house, 62 acres. And Michael Kilcullen, 10 and a half acres. Other tenants were John Scott, Michael Doherty, Connor, Connor Kearney, Michael Ford, Patrick Kennedy, Mary Ford. They paid a total of £167.11 in rent annually. Now, some of these people uh, may have owned two or three holdings or had them rented. Some of the names survived. Paddy Kennedy's has gone and uh, Kearney's have gone and Ford's, I think, have gone. So this was it here, above the road, and this area up here. This was known as Baden Hill Upper. Now, the other side of this road here, down there, was Bam Bam Hill Lower Now this here is a mound of earth which once I suppose could have been the past the grave Yes, it, it certainly looks very like it, well past the graves would date from about 2500 BC uh, <coughs> down to maybe four or five hundred years maybe more they had a kind of a curve, a uh, ring round them. That now would be the, the, the centre of it, uh, where the burials took place. And there were usually cremations. Yes. Now that's, uh, that's still the centre. And you see in the, uh, in the distance now at the far end, uh, that would be some of the curb stones. Or that possibly is a capstone that rolled down um, when the mound was... Uh, a round head. In those uh, yeah. yeah, a round head. Denuded by farmers or other people looking for... Yes, and weathering, I suppose, too, would have yeah. uh, washed some of it away. <coughs> now, uh, this there, there's part of the curb again now. Hello. And so some of those stones are moved off of position. They should be in a kind of a circle or in an orbit. Yeah, the entrance was from here, I'd say, going in from this side, yes. east to west in the, the centre. Yeah, well, that's, that's generally the way they... Yeah. And this one was not mapped now by O'Donovan, I don't think, or on the present day maps, it's not not this particular uh, Well, I said that that's well worth investigating because um, I'm sure there would be some kind, possibly pottery, uh, bone pins or yeah. maybe human remains. Yeah. Now that's the boundary going over towards uh, Caramichon and Lissadrome. It's all a boggy area here. No, uh, but um, the 
the fact that it's a very mound there would mean that it was inhabited for at least a thousand yeah. years, and maybe two. Yeah. Some of the first, and these are some of the ancient roads that were here in about 1838. There was a big population here before the famine, yes. living in these bad conditions. Mm -hmm. And before the climate changed, and um, you know, when, when that was uh, Pastelan or Arab, as they call it, it would have supported a bigger population still. Yeah. I suppose so. Uh, yes. And that mound, that very ill place, is it uh, a kind of proof positive, if you like, that there were a large number of people in the area? Oh, yes. Maybe not on the hill, but yeah. certainly in the district. Yeah. Well, these are the roads used by the tenants and the uh, small farmers in those days, 1838, before the famine, and possibly after the famine and they had very poor land for living in. This is not Baha now. Also about 400 feet over sea level. Two houses in it. And now we're looking down, we can see the Cast Lachens gazebo there. And Lachens Strand. A great view from up here. Yeah. Also here is a, a trigonometrical point where Ireland Survey took levels and checked out their finding. Right here now, where we're standing. Covered in bushes there. Now he would be standing there on the mound, the highest point of Barn Hill, probably the place that gives its name, or uh, yes, gives the name Barnin. The little top or the little gap, probably the little top to Barn Hill. There's the present day houses of the village. A lot of them uninhabited. There's the Palmerstown River running out there by Khartoum and Kalada Bay in the background. And if we can see you, the Sahi up oh, there. The yeah. And one of the many roads in it still being used, I think, this one. This one has been used fairly recently, there are tracks of... We'll come to that now in Michael Herity's um, passage graves dating from about 2000 BC. And that's of Cairn U, as it is today, at Loch Crewe. And you can see the burial chambers there and the passage leading uh, on this side. <coughs> now, what he calls cruciform tombs. And they are, the, they are very much the same now as the ones, uh, the ones we were looking at. Um, all of these are different variations uh, and then in later times uh, they kind of went away um, uh, into, this, into this shape yeah. <coughs> now, uh, uh, this is a photograph now of the mound uh, at Dog uh, <coughs> and of course the one we're talking about now on Barren Hill wouldn't be anything like the size of that one but it will be, be the same general yeah. shape and there will be this mound of earth and stones and so on piled up over the burial plot or and over the burial spaces and the entrance would be over here on the right hand side wouldn't it if we were looking yeah, at there that's right that's and these were denuded by farmers or other people that needed the stones uh, yes later on you know the, um, the rain and the frost and everything else <coughs> over the years because in 2000 years there would be a fair, a fair amount of erosion and then there was a change in climate too in the meantime. Well, it would never leave it in the position that that uh, burial ground we're looking at there would be in. Like these stones, oh, no, they no. were all hooked <coughs> up and the whole mound round the edge was well, uprooted, well, wasn't well, it? Part of, part of it, no, part of it is a position, all right, but some of the stones are displaced, all yeah, right, you can yeah, see that. Yeah. Uh, but they were too big to roll very far. Yeah. Well, the, the, the useful stones, I suppose, were taken away for drainage or roads or whatever. There are a lot of little roads up here. Yeah, that's it, or, or field fences. Or yeah, yeah, or the like. Coming back again out of this photograph of, at, uh, of Loch Crow, uh, these chamber, the burials uh, were in here in these chambers. And now in this one you can see there are divisions. And they will be cremated, <coughs> and the bones then will be deposited here. Yeah. And over a thousand years, or maybe two thousand years, these places were still used for burials. And <coughs> there would be what they 
uh, call in dictionary terms ordinary inhumations afterwards, yeah. down to, Christ to Christian times, I yeah. would think. The reason we are doing this is Baden Hill looks something like this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And this kind of thing could have gone on there over 2000 uh, years mm -hmm. BC. Yes, yeah. uh, and possibly for the thousand afterwards too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh yes, for a long period of time, but mm -hmm. like, uh, it was mm -hmm. populated, I'd say, about that time and maybe earlier. Mm. But the similarity is remarkable. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so much so that you, you could nearly say positively that it's, it's one of these, or, or um, <coughs> more than likely one of those anyway. Yeah, the passage grave. Passage, yes. Yes, a cabin too. Clune Allahan, named after the meadow of Allahan. It has 236 acres of land. <coughs> and there we see it, bounded on most sides by streams. There's the Clune Allahan River running down towards Lachan Strand on the west side. And on the east side another stream goes down and into the Clunalhan River. And uh, this area up here is another river there too. And there's the road that goes down through the centre of the townland from and towards Bohol. And this is the road that goes up through uh, Clun yes. And there's the village at the centre of it. The village of Clunalhan in the townland of Clunalhan. Now this road goes away up and out through Clunboy. Here's the site of an old house at the bridge. And there's the bridge, the boundary bridge, Clunalahan Bridge, named after the townland and the river. Flows away down. Right of that river is the townland of Clunalahan. Now Clunalhan also extends this side of the road. <coughs> Goes away up by this river here. Left of the river. And it goes away around. Here you see the river coming up here. Uh, so the river is barren like. <coughs> and it goes away around the hill there at the back until it meets at the stream at the back of uh, McLean's and McLean's house uh, away over there in these bushes Now there's the other road, going through the centre of the townland. Now this road leads to Clunboy. When it leaves the townland, a couple of hundred yards up the road here. That's a Kearney house, a uh, house that had a shop one time, and the last shop they had, I believe, was the butchering or selling meat. Tony Mihal. 
Hatch Henry or something <laughs> was the name of the house of the old man that lived here. That's the original house. Now there's the stream, that's the boundary. Left of that is Clunalahan. <coughs> Over there is another townland. And across here. Now up here, on the road here, is in uh, Clunalahan. There's a stream that crosses the road here. That is the boundary. Not the drain there, but a stream, the other left side of the road, as we see it. <coughs> and there it comes down by um, McLean's. And the way up around the corner there until it meets somewhere near the Clunarhan River, the far side of the hill. You can see the drain going way up there. Now the house on the left there is in Clune by. Uh, the stream runs right under the pillars there and down along the road, under the car. You see it running down there. And that house there is McLean, it's in Clune by. The dog is probably in it. Between us and the dog there is the townland boundary. Now this road here is in Clunalahan. The meadow of Alahan. Now down there to the left was the site of an old house. I don't know was it of some importance or not. Now we're heading off towards the heartland of Clunalahan. To the village of Clunalahan in the townland of Clunalahan. And here we see it right ahead here. Now left here, on the left hand side, is the fort, which is not on the maps, on the today's maps. Allahan's Fort, a, a big one, the one that gives its name to the townland. The chief himself is supposed to be buried there, Allahan. We we'll go up here to the left to find it. This is the village of Clunalhan and the townland of Clunalhan. According to Donovan of 1838, it comes from Clunalhan, Allahan's meadow or law. It is in the parish of Lacken, it was the property of Debrew Kirkwood of Clunalha. He let it to occupying tenants for uh, two lives and to others at will. Rent was 29 shillings an acre annual. Oats, flax and potatoes were the crops. The village of Clunalhan was situated in the middle of the townland. Here is the village and down that way. It contained almost 236 acres of land. In 1856 it was leased uh, to Captain Phibbs and he had at least two tenants and the tenants were Patrick Taher, Patrick Franklin, James Mahan, Patrick Taher, Charles Kearney, Aeneas Early, Patrick Kearney, Patrick Kearney, Owen Kearney, Owen Kearney, Patrick Kearney, McGurn, Ellen Rogan, Patrick James who had 45 acres in it and he had a head house, Thomas Kearney, John Rape and Patrick Taher again. Many of names are occurring over and over again. It may have been the same man that had a few uh, holdings rented from Captain Fibbs or least. Now this townland gets its name from... Now, Alhans Fort is uh, not in the direction I pointed out there. It is across the road in uh, Patrick Kearney's field, just behind the house. On the right here is uh, James E. Clarks. He has been dead for the last oh many years, 40 years. He was a weaver, a linen weaver and uh, uh, a woolen weaver. Now we are approaching the stream here passing down is the boundary. It goes way up there to the right. down to the left, crosses away the down there and goes away over to the left. Left of that stream, Clunalahan. It goes into the Clunalahan River and is the townland boundary on the north side.
right there is Fohal. And here are the lands of Clonalahan. Now way up there to the right on this side is another fort. This one is Martin and the six inch map of the day. Uh, it may have been a burial ground, but it doesn't give its name to the townland. And now up here is the house of James E. Clark. This house was built by Aeneas Early, who was a builder. And here is the fort, here at the back of the present day Patrick Kearney's field, a massive fort, Allahan's fort. Tradition has it that he's buried here. The structure has fallen apart over the years. You can see how it has been built, or it had been built up there. Almost six feet in height, maybe six feet in height. of stones and clay and this is what it looks like on the top there forward is Patrick Kearney's house and we see the extent of Alhans Fort which O'Donovan omitted for some unknown reason now here I'd say is the tunnel where it would start the escape chamber somewhere around here where he's standing and it goes off uh, in that direction out there we say that because many liquids and fertilizers on the ground there have disappeared down through here for some unknown reason. Allahan's Fort. Now here is in Paul Ailey's land is a site of an ancient school that was here possibly before or during the same time as the Caramore Palmer School. Who did you hear saying that uh, it was there? Tomataha. Yeah, well, that's part of his, is it? Yeah. There was four or five houses in there. Must have been more than that, wasn't it? No, I don't know. It was them that was working on the Rundales down there, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There were Rundales here too. This area here? Yeah. Probably was. But they haven't leveled it out. They did, yeah. <laughs> and the last bit was leveled the other day, wasn't it? Right. There the yeah. The key lodges was all levelled at that time. <laughs> if you were ahead. What was the day so I was in business, you wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, the site of the old school. You don't know the ever hear the name of the schoolmaster that was here? No. He wasn't Hoban, was he? No. Or Mehdi? No? No, we never have the name. Yeah. That was his name. That's it. The early man won't build in the house there above. Yeah. But he built that pair of tantrums. Yeah. What's the matter now? In, in. And he hadn't the money to put the slates on it. And he wouldn't get the sk they wouldn't buy it on then. Well, they wouldn't rent it like they wouldn't rent it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, down there are the run Yeah, below at the track now. There's no one below at anything in the house. Yeah. Well, one man that owned it, was it? That's like he owned each strip, was it? Yeah. And he... Well, could he till it? He could till it, but uh, he couldn't graze the place. No, he'd have to tether the cow mm. there, wouldn't he? He'd be there with her. He'd have to tie the cow to his leg and be working away. Where was that it? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting me now, <laughs> I believe it... I believe, no, no, I believe it was a constant source of... Uh, what was it then? Aggravation down here, these run days, wasn't they? They yeah, were always, they were always in the next. And then oh. if you let out a cow, she was gone into the next man's field. Yeah. And the wall was up then. Oh, the wall was up. Did you ever hear of any fist fights being here on the of it? No. no. I just uh, having a go at one another, yapping away. Well, the houses look the same. Ah, oh, they'd be different. 
No, but wasn't they built very close to one another? They were built up to other, I believe. Yeah. So they must the houses must be going down farther down the down the lane there, were they? No. No. But don't have this man in here now. Oh yes. Yeah, and round the boat. Hello. Yes. The first one down here. Yeah. Down here, we're going to go down there and one over there and then there below. Yeah. So it went down this way? It went over here along the sea. And over along the ditch? And over along the ditch below. And over where the white factory is? Yeah. That's the height of the field. Must be in a white spot there because there was a gap there for good. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's what we're going to go to the house. Tell me. What? Were there houses going down any farther than this? I know there wasn't. It was the right of way down to the land below. Yeah. Do you ever hear about any fights about the, the run, Dave? Yes. Did you not? Do you remember the run, Dave, being in use? You did not, did you? Who owned the land at that time? Oh, yeah. Where was that little road going over there now? See that little road going over there? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Well, it's just one side that On the right hand side? Yes. Four that's, that's four was there. That was where St. Patrick was supposed to have landed first, was it? It's after he was to carry him on the mountain and went over to Sam, Ah, yes. Do you they know... Do they you know never the door of Sam, like that, never covered. Yeah. Do you remember the end? Uh, I think that he actually was to the Yeah, and everyone was bigger. The next one was bigger. He said there never would be Sam and Kiltigan. Well, did he throw his stone in the water and say that, never be, uh, that the Sam wouldn't be caught there again until it was washed ashore? He did. It is. It is. There was never a family. Yeah. So I think no, he was wrong. I think the big toad was seven or eight pounds. Did you? He was a salmon. You think he was a salmon? <laughs> Maybe that stone was washed ashore again, was it? I know. That wouldn't be washed Yeah. But what did you do now? That wouldn't be washed Tell me, what side was he standing on? Must be the fourth side. The fourth side, because the hill is there all the same. Oh, yeah. You see, that must be only now that would happen. Well, it might be bigger than what it is today, Thomas. <laughs> it, 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 it could be. It could be. The water is falling in and it's getting out. Yeah. Oh, that's it. No, they never go over a shot at him. Never did? No. That's where all the four trees which be saved one was, I think. Yeah. It's just at the very brown over that thing. Oh, I see you there. I got it there. Oh, not a tower. Would you get it there? Oh, yeah. Huh? Yes, 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 yes. What do you think it was? The lithium, was it? Yes, the lithium. Yes, the lithium. Yes, the lithium. Yes, the lithium. On that side. Yes, the lithium. Yeah. He never touched it? No, no. And that's in Caramore Townland, isn't it? Caramore. Yeah. How long ago was this the last burial, Tommy? Oh, okay. What age was the last burial? Is this over, well over 50, is it? Yes, Since the last burial was in yeah. yeah. Is there any special name on it there? The Lysine in Caramoa <coughs> and they are the Rundales that have been rotivated lately. You can see the dark tracks of the clay. In between them was the Rundale of the Cree Lodge and one man dare not trespass on the other. Belong to the people of the Balahis. There was a constant source of aggravation and trouble between the tenants and the uh, uh, cottagers or whatever they were that were living here. Now, down here we are told, in this area, just about here now, is the site of a giant grave. Tradition has it. Tommy Tahar is the source. In that area. He said there were a few stones left there. Well, this I'm down is standing here, the giant's grave. Now, this is the house of John Clark, the weaver.
How was some of James's waving? 40 years ago, was it? Yeah. Oh, long one of two. Oh. Well, 40 years ago. No. That's Feather's Way. Did I still ever do it on the low? Yeah. Well, your father's name wasn't James, was it? John. John. Oh, yeah. Handiwork. Yes, yes, yes. Plume. And uh, what else did he do? Had he the cattle machine? No. He hadn't. Well, they had cattle of some type or another, hadn't they? They had the they had cars, cars and the spinning machine. <laughs> right, the wheels, yeah. The spinning wheels, that's right. Yeah. And then they had the warping bars, which they had to work there. Right, you see, yeah. we're just pushing the load. Yeah. And then they turned out some material like this, didn't they? That's right. Yeah. You never heard of Williams's tailors in this town, no? No, no. Coleman's are not like that. Coleman. Yeah. Weavers, there were two Coleman. Yeah. Yeah. You hear of Hoban's uh, down in Pohol, no? Yeah, in Hoban, yeah. 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 I'm not sure there was a Weaver. I don't know. Yeah. 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 In the in the in the townland, there was the the weavers, and there was the carpenters, and there was the builders, and there was and the, the shoemakers. Shoemakers, Franklin's up there. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the teachers now. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's lately they were living here, wasn't it? Why, Jim? Well, there were people in the other job, but there was a scandal about wasn't it? There were. John Scandal, down by Nightclub. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Peter, that the name is. Yeah, yeah, the name is down there, 1856. You know, it's Peter. Now I had some of them calling him Mickey. But Peter was the name I saw down on the evaluation of 1856. You are not looking for the back now. There's a tight head in the yeah, back. Yeah. Just from here to there is only for that. Yeah. Close tight, they suppose, Mickey. Now this... Uh, John Clark here was one of the craftsmen of the village. Another one was the builder up here, Aeneas Early, and uh, Franklin's on the right here, Shoemakers. The Aileys were also carpenters. Now tradition has it here that this bush ahead was called Piper's Bush. For some unknown reason they had music there late at night. And uh, maybe phosphorus if they had travelled the marsh on their shoes which gave the idea of fire now and again. A tradition. That wall by the gate going down there the bush in the background is supposed to be called Clay Chordna or Clay Torna. There was supposed to be a lightning strike there. Another man said it was the boundary. Well, there's no boundary there at present. <coughs> Each of these villages were uh, kind of a complete unit. They had the craftsman, they had the weaver, and then here was the shoemaker. Uh, a Paddy Franklin, or a Patrick. And uh, further up to the right there was the uh, builder in his early. He lived up here. He was also a carpenter. This was the house he built. And there was this plaque on the wall, erected by Aeneas Early in the year 1874. He intended to have a schoolhouse here. In here to the left, Franklin the shoemaker lived. Townland of Clunarahan. Well, we're looking there at the Rundale system. <coughs> yes, indeed. Um, I understand that um, the Latin area was one of the last places where it was uh, um, in operation. Uh, it was common all over the country um, 100, 150 years ago. And in fact, <coughs> I think it goes back to pre Norman times. Yeah. Um, only times now what used to happen is um, <coughs> they had pieces of land and they had a rotation. Now I'm not absolutely certain of the rotation, but I think it was potatoes, oats, um, maybe uh, oats yeah. again. <coughs> then it was left fallow for a year or two years, <coughs> and then they went to another field. Now taking each field individually, the whole village then uh, had stripes there, and the little sound uh, divisions between them were called quilodes. Yeah. Um, the divisions themselves, there probably is an Irish name for them, but I don't know it. Mm. Um, they had they were arranged in such a way that, um, if you like, <coughs> the light soil and the good soil and maybe the wet, 
who were part of every, uh, part of everybody's patch. Mm. The <coughs> the field was divided um, as evenly as they could. <coughs> then they drew lots for it, and somebody who had a particular patch one year needn't necessarily have it the next time. The the headman in the village used to draw lots, uh, <coughs> and that was the fairest way. The same way too with the quality of the soil. Yeah. And they tried to arrange the patches in such a way that it was evenly divided. Yeah. So the, the councils, the, they were a constant source of aggravation and uh, rows and... Uh and well, uh, the, there again, you see, they had common edges. <coughs> now, the difficulty was the fences. Um, the, what was uh, <coughs> set aside for tillage wasn't supposed to be grazed. Yeah. <coughs> but then there were headlands, and uh, sometimes that was a little bit too good to let go. Yeah. <coughs> but it meant, in other words, uh, that any man who grazed uh, a tillage place wasn't playing the game. <coughs> and for that reason, he'd, uh, he'd probably get the enmity of his neighbours. <coughs> now, they had a way of, <coughs> excuse me, they had a way of dividing the, the community as well. <coughs> I can't remember exactly now what it was. This is going back now to the Breton laws. <coughs> the grazing for two geats, I think, was equal to that of a sheep. <laughs> <coughs> the grazing of two sheep, I think, was the same as a, uh, as a calf. <coughs> uh, two calves then, <coughs> I think, uh, same as a year old. And two year olds then, um, <coughs> the same as a full grown animal. Yeah. <coughs> now, that, that's subject to correction, but uh, they, had, they had a division like that. Yeah, this was when land was unfenced and all the people of the village owned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. had to graze the Well, there, was, uh, there were commonages up for, for a long time. Lacken Hill was all a commonage at one stage. Yeah. There's still a commonage down there in Lacken the Risk, but it's mm. not been used. Uh -huh. you know? Ah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> um, there was a man <coughs> called Knight uh, who was the engineer for the North Coast Road <coughs> and he spent a good deal of his time previous to that uh, in Binghamstone area <coughs> and he's written fairly extensively about um, this system <coughs> there's another man called Eston Evans um, and he came and did an investigation of the Latin ones and I think that was about 1927 <coughs> and that's the last uh, authoritative thing that I know about uh, concerning uh, the whole Rundale system. Yeah. Each village now had uh, they were a, a whole unit and they had uh, all their craftsmen there. I think mm. you know something about the um, the weavers, how it worked. Yeah, yeah well, no, there were linen and um, woolen weavers. Yeah. Mm. But for the linen weavers, uh, I don't think there was one to every village, but certainly there would have been one to every two or three town lands. <coughs> and then the more, quite a number of the linen weavers uh, came in, or the families came in from the, down from the north around 1795 and brought their looms with them. Um, <coughs> ordinarily now for the woolen weavers, the women of the house <coughs> would um, get the wool, um, it had to be washed and scoured <coughs> first, <coughs> from there on then it had to be carded, uh, <coughs> then it had to be spun uh, into single thread. They do that though with the, the spinning wheel, wouldn't they? The, one, yes. the timber one we see today. Uh, yeah, well, the, um, there was a special woolen wheel, which was a bigger wheel now than, yeah. the, than the flax yeah. wheel. Yeah. But a lot of them used to use the flax wheel for spinning too. Yeah. And then there were single threads. That, uh, they had also what they call a walking machine then, for doubling or even trebling. There were usually uh, double threads. Um, <coughs> then, the, generally what they used to do was make it into big balls, <coughs> which would be about t two or three stone weight. Uh, they would be oh, maybe 18 inches to 2 feet in diameter. They were brought to the weaver then, <coughs> usually on the, uh, in a dog and creeds, yeah. or sometimes just um, tied onto the straddle. Um, the weaver then, I think, had to take it um, uh, into a hanks and then set it up on, the <coughs> on his uh, loom. Yeah. Um, and the weaving itself was a slow and fairly complicated process. And like every other craft, <coughs> some men were better at it than others. Uh, <coughs> then, as the old people say, with respect to you, <coughs> they had a particular, they used to um, collect urine, mm -hmm. and that oh, was yeah. part of the treatment for, for uh, fatty or thickening the uh, the wool. Yes, the Kalamaramin had a name for that, marsh that I used to hear them talking about. What that is, collected in barrels. That's it. Right? That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And where the, the fields then, where they spread it out, that would be the bleaching fields, more or less. Well, yes, that, that would be mostly now for the flax. Yeah. Uh, the flax. Yeah. 
and there were tours at Turi. That's right. There's got the tour back near Bally Castle there. It's supposed to be named after that particular thing. Ah, yes. And there's a tour in down that lacking too. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it was named <coughs> after that. And it's sad to think that even the cards uh, for the carding of the wool <coughs> nearly disappeared off the scene. Another thing about the cards, <coughs> way, way back in trouble times, in land agitation and things like yeah. that, uh, <coughs> the um, punishment for a man who didn't conform uh, was to give him a rub of the cards, which was a savage thing yeah. uh, on his bare back. Oh, yeah. Kind of savage punishment. Okay. Mm-hmm. Each, each community in those days, they were, they were uh, self-sufficient, weren't they? Oh, more or less. Uh, well, they had to be. Um, <coughs> if they weren't, uh, they just had to do without. They had, uh, they had the, uh, the blacksmith, the shoemaker, yeah. the weaver, yeah. and uh, cool. for the, yeah, for the doctor they had these people with charms, hadn't they? Thrown away back or whatever. Uh, yes, yes. What did they uh, call them? Some kind of doctors? Uh, there was, it wasn't quite doctors. Mm, anyway, Bone setters, yeah. Um, and seven sons and the likes, weren't they? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and peop- people then who had cures. And there were animal doctors as well, who were worse. Yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> there's there's a, a photograph now of a flat wheel. Um, and this thing, that was the pedal thing. There's a kind of a, uh, a spindle out here <coughs> with a little attachment. You can't see it on this one. And pressing that starts the wheel to spin. This then is the uh, spool that goes round, uh, and this is for holding the thread, you can raise it or lower it. That's a flex wheel. <coughs> now, there's a woolen wheel, <coughs> which was a much bigger one. Now, and um, as I said, lots of people used to use the flex wheel uh, for spinning uh, yarn as well, for spinning the, the woolen threads. Um, over here now is the warp. Uh, this thing collected the hanks. Uh, <coughs> and it, uh, it made it into hanks. Now, there's a size and a weight um, for one uh, every one of those, <coughs> and I, I don't know. Did that spin now? Did any of them spin? Yes, this one. Yeah, uh, yeah. But well, they're uh, spinning fast now. What's slow? Slow. To, it would be fairly slow yeah. uh, t- uh, to take up this. <coughs> but normally, when they wanted uh, blankets made and so on, uh, <coughs> as far as I can remember now. They used to uh, uh, to wind the thread into large balls, uh, which would be nearly that size now. And as I say, there would be two to three stone weight. Yeah. Um, and they knew the number of pounds of thread um, <coughs> which it would take uh, to make an ordinary blanket. Yeah. Now, <coughs> the linen ones, I don't know. I don't know exactly how they used to do the thread. But um, <coughs> again, it was brought to the weaver usually. Um, uh, and he did the the weaving part of it, but I think that the the linen one uh, was in hanks like this. Yeah. Right. <coughs> well, to rotate that now, uh, there was an attachment on to the um, from here uh, to the pedals. Uh, this was went up and down, <coughs> uh, and uh, it caused this then to rotate. Yeah. Would it, would it be on that? On the yes, on the centre there, yeah. on the axle part. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was yes. the story of weaving? Part of it. Part, part of it, of only a little bit of it. Yeah. Sadly now we haven't uh, we haven't a photograph there with the, the cards. Yeah. The only thing that's missing I think out of here, isn't it? Mm, yes. But they, they, now with linen, there's an awful lot more um, <coughs> besides that. Um, no, before it reached this before it reached this stage. Um, it had to be pulled, <coughs> usually in July. They knew when the flowers were blue. Yeah. Um, <coughs> then uh, it was buried in a, uh, a bog hole <coughs> uh, until it rotted, until the outside uh, film rotted. <coughs> then they knew the length of time to leave it there. It was taken up then uh, to be partially drained. After that then um, it had to be beaten to break this outer sheath to get at the strands of linen. Um, <coughs> and then, oh, I can't remember now, <coughs> that was beetling. There was flex pans, so there was no pans for wetting too, wasn't there? Uh, that's it. <coughs> that's it. Um, then the, uh, the beetle kind of broke the outer, the outer sheet uh, and separated the fibres. Then it had to be clothed and hackled. I'm not sure which came first, no, the hackling yeah. or the clothes, yeah. but I think clothes and hackles. Um, <coughs> and then uh, <coughs> at that stage um, 
it was tied together in, in bundles um, of single fibres. <coughs> now, the spinning process uh, took over from there. Yeah. And I'm a bit uncertain from there on. Well, how was the finished product like? Was it something like the woolen uh, material? <coughs> or would it be there that again, close? There again, uh, you see, when they were spinning, they could spin a heavy thread or a light one. Oh, yeah. Depending on what they wanted to use yeah. it for. Yeah. Now, for towels and sheets and things like that, yeah. they had a fine thread. Yeah. The thing we forgot to mention earlier now is about um, dyes, natural dyes that they used to use for the wool. Um, and uh, I see here uh, in a magazine they talk about logwood dye. There was also a dye that they used to make out of um, certain herbs and lichens and things, um, depending on the colour. Black was the one that was mostly used. There are a number of others as well. Uh, also, we forgot to mention about um, homespun suits, you know, clothing, clothing of various kinds. Uh, <coughs> Bonin would be a kind of a cross between a waistcoat and uh, uh, and a coat. Well, it wasn't the material, though. Uh, well, yes, the the um, sometimes <coughs> the front, the part of it that would be seen, would be shop cloth, as they used to call yeah. it. Yeah. And the rest of it then would be made out of the woolen or out, out of the homespun. Oh. Yeah. Um, and um, the elbows would wear, so the sleeves could be replaced. The back would wear too, <coughs> if they were carrying turf or uh, anything else. And <coughs> in fact, there's a wish about long life. <coughs> May you live so long that the skin of a gooseberry would make a back for your waistcoat. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, this this was it called a waistcoat or a shan vest in those days? Did they call them vests? Uh, well, the, the, the vest was the ordinary was the ordinary waistcoat. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, <coughs> the bonnie, I think they used to the, the, it was what they used to call sleeved waistcoat. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. <coughs> there's a little description here now. The back and sleeves were of grey flannel, six buttons in front, and they are said to have been a nice, warm, tidy garment. Um, <coughs> then the suits, so especially for, uh, for boys and young men, they were made also by um, a local tailor. <coughs> now here again we are on to uh, a new idea. <coughs> Tailors had apprentices. and to kind of qualify and uh, get out of their apprenticeship uh, and become a fully qualified tailor they had to go through this stage of being journeyman tailors yeah. <coughs> and usually they went round and they stayed in the house now they picked a house where there weren't kids <coughs> because if there were children that they'd, they'd, they'd um, be looking at their patterns and maybe uh, losing their needles and, and right. thread and yeah. so on so <coughs> anybody who wanted a suit made they brought the makings uh, including the trimmings now that would be uh, back uh, linings, buttons, thread, all the rest of it. And um, then they made a bargain uh, with the tailor. And <coughs> usually when the tailor was at work, um, <coughs> it, it was a kind of a holiday period because he had all the news of the countryside with him. <coughs> and in the evenings when the work was finished, uh, there was maybe music or there would be storytelling or something, and certainly they would have got information from the journeyman tailor. Now, a lot of the tailors um, might have been people who uh, had broken legs or uh, maybe weren't very healthy. Yeah. <coughs> and this was a job that didn't require a lot of physical strength. Yeah. And um, <coughs> some of the tailors also had a reputation for being short-tempered. That's right. Uh, <coughs> I've heard about that yeah. too. <laughs> um, then <coughs> they went around with him a big smooth iron, which they used to call a goose. I think that was because of the shape of the uh, of the handle at the top. Yeah. And it was like a goose's neck. Yeah. That was a heavy one for pressing. Was he yeah. called Johnny Man now because of all the travelling he did? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. then you had Johnny Man carpenters as well. <coughs> they went oh, from yeah. place to place. Well, it uh, be, yeah. There would be one house in the village he would operate in until he had all the village uh, uh, clothes. Ah, yeah. 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 Now, in some cases, uh, I'd say um, a man with a growing family. <coughs> they, they, their clothes would wear, would wear all quicker and he could have stayed with them but if he could he picked a house where um, <coughs> as I said there wouldn't be children to interfere with his work yeah. and when he could patterns or there would be mis mislaying things or yeah. losing yeah. them or yeah. so forth yeah. another thing also <coughs> that we forgot to mention earlier was this um, thing about quilting and <coughs> that was usually a kind of a community exercise as well and the women of the neighbourhood came in mm. and 
it was a slow and tedious and an expert job <coughs> and if you see some of the some of those quilts might still survive <coughs> and the the uh, the sewing is expert uh, they prided themselves on being able to make all the stitches of equal length and the stitches were done crisscross <coughs> now um i'll quote this a little bit from the article i mentioned before quilts were made from flannel dyed red this was packet dye sold in shops. Three or four widths, widths were sewn together, backed with an old blanket usually, and quilted. Every village had a quilting frame. A couple of women would sit at it, stitching the two thicknesses together in a zigzag fashion. A girl getting married always got bedclothes, blankets, a quilt, bed linen, towels, etc. to take to her new house. This was called the bag of Aurus. That's the, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was written by, um, what's her name again? Oh, yes, uh, Liz Hagerty. She's Canon Wilds' housekeeper. Oh, uh, Yes. Yeah. Uh, and she comes from here. <coughs> and she'd have gone to the trouble of checking every single item of that. Oh, yeah. Mm. This is in the um, Ballycastle Parish magazine. Very good. Fowl, named after the underwood, or under the wood, 428 acres, and there's a, a spot where St. Patrick was supposed to have met the Fowl fisherman, and here is a giant's grave, and there's the road that runs through Fowl Cross the one that goes on to Banagher and this is the road that comes down from uh, Brest and Turin down towards the strand running right through Fohol and there is the strand where the Clunalan River enters itself Tabernaray King's Well or Queen's Well the standing stole called that Balbini and Tabernagreve the well of the palms or the branches and here is the Lachin burial place Fohol, the townland named under the wood, and this is Upper Fohol. This fence running down here to the right is the boundary, the southern boundary, running way over there to the east. There are some of the houses in Fohal Upper. Now a fourth, or this run, this road runs through a fourth, which is an unusual thing. And there we see another fort, but it's not in Fohal. The wall there is the boundary. Runs away down there. And then it turns right when it meets the stream, way down at the townland of Clonallahan. There's a view of the Fohal Marsh. And this is a view from the townland of Clonallahan. The river runs across here, right of that is Fohol, Fohol Marsh. And there's the Fohol, uh, the Clonallahan River, right of that is Fohol, Fohol Marsh. And down there is the mound where the St. Patrick met the Fohol fisherman. And, uh, he asked him for a salmon and he told him he'd give him the next one. And the next one was bigger and he told him he'd give him the next one. Finally, after three salmon, St. Patrick was supposed to have thrown the stone into the river and said that no more salmon would be caught in this river until that stone was washed ashore. It happened, we are told, tradition has it down on this mound here.
Now, left of that river is Kiligiri, Kiligiri Marsh, and in the background is the ruins of Castle Lacken. <coughs> And here's the river where it all happened. Probably St. Patrick's first landing place in this area. Now this is an area here for sheep raising. This marsh area, rushy area. Donovan describes uh, a quote from the Irish word for while, meaning underwood. In 1838, this townland was uh, had uh, 439 and a half acres and was owned by J. Burke of Barana. He let it to tenants at 50 shillings an acre. 160 acres of this was uncultivated, probably the marsh down there. There were 47 families living in this townland, all in poor condition. It was in the parish of Kilcommon. In 1856, The immediate lesser was Sir W. Roger Palmer Baronet. The tenants were Anthony O'Hara, Patrick O'Hara, Bridget Kelly, Martin Jordan, Catherine Jordan, Martin O'Malley, Patrick Cooper, Anthony Duffy, Bridget Mehdi, Sir William Roger Palmer Baronet had a cottage here and no land. Patrick Malley, Andrew Malley, Thomas Malley, James Bradykin, Michael Hoban, John Tierney, Thomas Kearney, Anthony Reap, Michael Gillespie, William O'Hara, Anthony Morton, Nicholas Collins, Michael McHale, Martin McNulty, Patrick Taha, Thomas McHale, Nicholas Collins, Honor Collins, Michael Gillespie, Bartholomew Finerty. Nicholas Collins again. He had a pound here. Bridget Hughes, Anthony Kelly and Nicholas Collins. Now some of these tenants' names occur over and over again. There were 65 tenants here in 1856. They probably moved in during the famine times to get fish, cockles, sand eels, shellfish. They settled down by the strand on the seashore when food failed them wherever they were in the townlands close by because there were only 47 <coughs> families here in 1838 and 65 in 1856. Some of them I think also were brought in by Reverend Peter Neary. Uh, the present day map shows four hillers having 428 acres. It must have lost some. <coughs> Now we're looking down at from Fohill four Upper. This is Fohill Cross Rose and the left here was McHale's where Dr. McNulty used to have a clinic. On the right here was Early's, the Carpenters. And on the left here, as we turned down, was the Collins' Forge. Now we're going down to what is called Tubbery near Frank Lachnes. In its water, Donovan says St. Patrick is said to have baptized King Auley and 900 of his people. Down here to the right. Tubbery. And that's it right there. In pretty bad condition today, polluted. today polluted and built it. Which one? This one and that one. The two big ones there? Yeah. They were the rocks that were around us. Yeah, so you have everyone taking me. No. Tell me, was uh, was it you that did that job on the well there? No. Who did it? It's not much. Oh, Pat Murphy. Did the villagers use it for spring water or they what? They did. It was used all for spring water. Yeah, yeah. Of course you have all the pipe water now, haven't you? Uh, yeah. Well, I'll uh, tell you that if that was clean, I'll clean and see. That used to dry these late years. Did it? Used to. Yeah. Out of store. It is sure like. Yeah. So they were the three that made up the well. They were the three that were around here in the circle. Yeah, yeah. And that, that wasn't... There was one within there and there was one here and there was one out here. Yeah, yeah. And this wasn't around here on the wall, on the... 
this wall, this wall wasn't doing it at all. Oh, actually, I know, that was, that was a later addition, wasn't it? But, uh, they're doing up that. It was about down to that. Yeah, yeah. But there was an old house there, there was a house room, my name wasn't living there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Timber post there. Yeah. I'm not sure now what it's called. A pound or not? A pound or not. But I have not tackled. You did? I did. So it was around then? Oh, it was somewhere around here. Yeah. And then there. Barely the carpenter. That's right. Up here. Up there now. Where the... the, the Up uh, above the, well, the white wall is. Yeah. That's where the, the carpenter is. What's the other side of the road? He was on the left hand side doing up. Oh yeah. It'd be in there. Yeah. And down here is the site of uh, Collins' Ford. That's where the Ford is now straight from the pole there. Yeah. And now we see the the road. Yeah. You and then the pound. The pound was supposed to be around there, that, the, yeah. that harbour. And uh, further down then was uh, Hoban's where the... The uh, Hoban's the tailor then was down further. Yeah. And still further down Magaruri came from it, did it? Yeah, me, me, how good, yeah. This is John Malius. Would he be below John Malius? If you had to say he'd be below John Malius, that, that what you see has changed. It has. Would he be below Frank Murphy's? No, but I tell you, like, for you, the state of Frank Murphy's now. There's a little road going to the right. The road going up. Yeah. Well, he'd be up there now on the right hand side, about middle way. He'd be, he wouldn't be all, they wouldn't be living all together now with his mountain panels. Yeah. Do you know yeah. that? There's the site of the old forge, the Collins' forge. And up here on the left was Pat Haley, the carpenter, and further up on the left was uh, Mary Lynn, the dressmaker. <coughs> now we're going down to Fohal Lower, and uh, on the right of this bush of briars here was the pound owned by Nicholas Collins. In here to the right. Now, here on the right is one of the Collins' houses. This village was all Collins' at one time, carpenters and blacksmiths. In Fohal Lower now. And this house here was uh, Hoban's. They were tailors, somewhere around here. And this house here uh, is not a hotel, it's, a, it's the residence belonging to the Collinses. At the back is the last of the Collins uh, blacksmiths, John. And on the left here was a carpenter, Collins also, Mike. Now this was the O'Malley house, so where the O'Malley's were, well it was to the left of this, they were uh, masons. Also joined onto the old house was the Makururi house. Both houses joined on together around this corner here. Now uh, in front there, as we're taking the turn, was another well that supplied the whole village. Or the lower part of the village. Now we're moving on the road, a new road that was made in uh, about 1940, going over to Karen Trasna. On the left here is Connors. And on the right in here, well on the left now as we're looking at it, was where Mark Rory lived. Somewhere built onto that new house or near it, down there. Now this road here is a relatively new road going on to uh, Cadden Trasna. Down there is Lac Balbini. That Marcus has been already says the Battle of Lashkin in 1975. And over here is Tubber the Grieve, the Well of the Branches. The Blessed Well, St. Patrick's Well. Now down here is the Lichine. You see the amount of stones around forth of some type or another. Just south of the Blessed Well. And uh, it was a burial ground, we see a tombstone there. People were buried there, I think infants were buried there that were unbaptized. Maybe big people were also buried there.
and here in front of it is another kind of mound. I don't exactly know what this one is, or what it was about. Maybe a crumb like of some type or another. boundary wall goes up here somewhere up to the right there, I think it's that stone wall that goes away up there and here's another mound uh, yes, there's one across this fence here Now this area down here is important in Lacken because this is where St. Patrick was supposed to have first started his mission around here. And this area here was supposed to be a wooded area all up as far as Palmerstown Bridge. How that well there at Frank Lattens? You were telling me there about... Uh, it took water out of the oil safe for putting on uh, tires. Yeah. Today, and it'll be dry, be dry tomorrow. Even though there was plenty of water? No matter how plenty of water is dry. Or how scarce it'll be? No, it makes no difference, it's dry. It's a dry? So, yeah. So, so that wasn't the, the well at all for the village? No, for, for the village above you's water. Yeah. The use. Oh, the, 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 the water for the village below came from that well there? Just below here, that's yeah. right. What about this tunnel we're talking about in there? The tunnel? Yeah. Oh, the tunnel is there in uh, St. Martin Connell's line now, okay. Yeah. I often went back myself a small, but I'd be, I'd be afraid to go back in. So you, you go up the road here and you find the little bridge? Yeah. Just, uh, just the other side of the bridge and then yeah. cross in. Then. Yeah. You're only about a hundred yards from it. Is it down the field straight then? Yeah, down the field straight. Oh, uh, would that be the mound of stones? That's yeah, that's where the, where the old heap of stones are. Oh, good, good, yeah. good. I was yeah. looking for that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Fowl has changed now since you were a young fellow, hasn't it? It's changed Fowl since I was small. Yeah. Yeah. Was there as many sheep in it as what there is today? No, 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 no. Very little sheep. Yeah. Very little sheep. And well, the two houses were fashioned out of them. Yeah. yeah. Gable to gable. Gable to gable. One gable was one roof. Uh -huh. With one roof on each other. Well, yeah. well, well. The two roofs was beaten. <coughs> yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. So this is where he, he was That's born and raised. Well yeah. yeah. That's no very well shoulder. Do you remember what his father's name was? Uh, Shorter. Shorter. Yeah. 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 And he had, had he had brothers and sisters too? He, he had. He had. Ah. So he had a fight and a... Um, he had two brothers more. Yeah, and four, four, four. John Rogers. John Rogers. John. John ah, yeah. 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 Well, he used to come on holidays then? Well, oh, he come? used them very often. Is that... Um, yeah. From Selland mm -hmm. Park used to come down on... Pat wasn't there, me, you know, and it he used to have a rifle, we used to be down there at the strand, shoot with the rifle. Oh, yeah. I got yeah. to say. Yeah. You don't remember the last time he came down, do you? I don't know. Fifty years mm -hmm. ago? Ah, oh, it is. Well, oh, it is and more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have that house built fifty years, and yeah. he didn't come down here since. Ah, I see. Uh, mm -hmm. We got it, we had, we got that, the two gap, you know, and then we threw mm -hmm. the whole house out. Ah, yeah. Oh, yes. Well, did, so the daughter, did the daughter ever come? He had a daughter, I believe. Well, I, I, I must see the when daughter. When she used to come at them, like? No. Mm. Well, no. Oh, yes. But she was in it, I heard. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. that, yeah. right. She did, surely. Uh, one of them was his mother, wasn't they? Yes, yes. She was Nancy, Cooper. Nancy Cooper. Yes, yes Nancy, Nancy Cooper. That's nice. Yes. Miss Padden, I think he, cause he said the name of the teacher. Did you ever hear of her? No, I didn't. It seems to, she, she was teaching somewhere well, here, well, anyway, she, I think. Well, she must be in Ballard, she was teaching. I, th I think he said Toreen, but I wouldn't Turin. be sure. Yeah. Well, the old Cooper man, uh, her father would have a school for a short time up in Toreen. You didn't ever hear of that, did you? I didn't. No. I, didn't. no. I, I never heard about the school in Toreen. No, but no. there was three schools back there. 
Was that? Mm -hmm. The school was changed, and this is the third place to say now. I see, I see. <laughs> yeah, well, well. The other uh, hall is there, was one. Uh -huh. the side of the hall, the side of the pub, there was yeah. another school there. That's, right. ah, that's yes, where the old school was. That's where they all went to school, that old. The side of the, uh, ah, the pub. Yes, the that's where McRory went to, was it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you couldn't say nothing to him. Only Irish, all Irish he had, you see. Oh, yes. Yeah, he used to have a copy of stick with him. If he spoke a word English, he'd kill you. Is that it? Oh, you'd want to be gone out of his way. The family, the marriage, they were tradesmen and builders, weren't they? Well, they were. He paid mm -hmm. up. Yeah, what was his name? Tom. Tom. Tom O'Malley. Did he build many of the houses? Oh, he did, and the great. I'm still on Tom Warden. Oh, yeah. Did they build any big houses like the parish priest house or any houses or schools around them? Oh, they did. Which ones now? They built Pat McLean's beyond part of that two story. Good, yeah. Any other one? They built Morris up at the crossroads. Morris? That John Barn house. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, his son, Jim. Yeah. And Johnny Hayes had built that. Yeah. But he was alive. He was alive that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And Sean and then beyond the other McCash Lacken and yeah. all. Yeah. Did he? They built one house up to the other McCash Lacken and the mouth over there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you know so? And did they do? And did they do? Yeah. 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 Not he was. He captain of Shore Lake. Merton and Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Mike was his son. Wasn't there a carpenter further up the road in Airlie? Uh, Matt and Airlie. Or Pat, was it? Uh, Matt and Airlie, and uh, there was two of them. There was one of them was about an old man, and the other was a young man. Yeah. Mm. They were up there near where Leonard's is today. Just where they were. Yeah. Just yeah. where yeah. Leonard is. Yeah, yeah. That's where they were, surely. Oh, so that's oh, yeah. This is the cave back the road. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you able to stand up back in it? Oh, you wouldn't be able to stand up. But thought you'd... Could go back no creeper like back in yeah. a long way. Yeah. From here to the from here to the gate. Oh, they say to that fair, a, a long way fair, and that's it. Yeah. Square up near the so you go the road, you go back here of that whole there. Yeah. Mm. Yes, they say. How far down did they say it goes? Does it go down to the Lachine or down that direction? Well, it's the side of the Lachine. Yeah, yeah, but which direction is it going in? Up straight is come on. Up from the Lachine? Up, up from the cove itself, you see. It's coming up to the river, up that way. Oh, I, I don't know how it's a turn and turn. Yeah, well, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But there's flags in it, it's built. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, flags yeah. in it, uh, couple of class over here, and built yeah. up with stones. Is there a floor in it? Yeah. No, so, well, there's a great small stones back in it, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no flag floor, no? No, I oh, know, you wouldn't get the flag floor at all, so. And it's not yeah. wide? Mm -hmm. Of course it is. You could, could creep in it, you could creep you in could. it easy. Yeah. It must be three feet wide, I thought. Is it? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If it was clear, the stone sick and out, it's very deep. Oh, is it? Well, it is, yeah. it is. How far did you go back in, 20 years? Uh, well, about 20 years. Was it getting any deeper then? Could you stand up in a ranton, no? Well, you wouldn't be able, no. Yeah. And I didn't back it, out. It's, uh, well, it was back fair, it got a bit narrow behind. Yeah. Mm. But I used to have a dog and he used to go back. When he'd be gone, he'd be gone. Half an hour. <laughs> well, there used to be a rabbit going back in it. Yeah. 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 Which direction do you think it was going in? It's coming up straight, Sean. Up straight from Fertis. For the river? For the river. Okay. Mm. Up for the road. That's mm. it. This one was here in the village. The Blessed Well? Yes. That could well, be the... Well, that was it. Well, you know. Down there at the corner. Well, that, yeah. that well down there at the corner is supplying uh, water for you, isn't it? Well, for the it was doing 15 houses before they... Bought for, for water, that's right. Was it? There's yeah. no one top of water, no feather out of it. I know. But mm -hmm. it's a pity it wouldn't be cleaned up and a pump was rolled or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, uh, it's better than the one that was up there at, uh, mm -hmm. at Lachnis, wasn't it? Oh, it never dried. Yeah. Oh, never yeah. dried. And this is cold as cold. Yeah. For the butter making, they do the for the butter. Oh, making. Yeah. butter. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. doing all that to house or still feather. Yeah. yeah. Twice yeah. your life. Tell me, was there any special name on the one up at Frank Lachnis' house? Covered in the way? No? No. 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 He says he's 85 years old. Yeah. Like the other one, isn't it? Supplying water to the whole village. Uh, yes, I said very, very cool. <coughs> in 
fact, they used to do that, I think, uh, sometimes for the butter making, <coughs> uh, to make sure that it was doubly cool. Draw the water in the evening, uh, and if the butter would, would say, in summertime especially, <coughs> in warm weather, if, uh, if the butter was uh, too soft to make it up, they'd wait till evening time, and then bring a can of water from the well, and then to uh, <coughs> that's to inherit it. Nihal McRory, Patrick Pierce's gardener, came from Fohan, from that house up there where it was situated a long time ago. He wrote a book about this area. He called it Le Lynn Moige, first published in 1944. His grandfather was Patrick Cooper, who was brought in by Reverend Peter Neary and got land in Fohan. He taught some kind of school in Bristol for a while. This is uh, Cooper did. English and Greek were the subjects before he moved into Killala. One of his daughters, Nancy, married George Rogers. Oh yes, John referred to him as Shorsha there. <coughs> Rory was one of their sons. He writes of four houses in his mother's time. Windows were tall and narrow, too small to let thieves come through. Yo's, that means yeoman soldiers, dressed as white boys, often raided tenants' houses. One night some of these yo's were assaulted by the real white boys, and two yo's were killed. Six white boys had to go on their keeping, as they say, to France. One of these was called Colonel Kane. In his house in his young days up here, uh, in Fohal, were pigs under the bed. Eight people lived in the house, healthy. Uh, there was a litter of banners at the foot of the bed. One cow and two calves were tied in the house. The house was cleaned every morning. He claimed Fianna Aaron spent their time on Lack and Strand the way down here. Single combats, he says, were fought here. And he also talks of burials being way down there in that direction at the Green Hill. Uh, in 1641, Fohill belonged to Richard Philbin. 244, well almost 245 acres of it, according to Simington's book of survey and distribution. Down here, uh, he calls Trelshaw. It's a narrow place where people are able to cross by foot. Even when the tide is up, you can get across there. And he talks of Goldmark Moore fighting a big battle down there with Jarrod Moore. This must be the same character that Paddy Caulfield writes about in his uh, Irish Lower there on, on Billy oh, Castle. Out of Don Patrick. Yeah, out of Don Patrick. <laughs> and that he was drowned out there. Well, Marguerite claims he was killed here and buried somewhere down there, maybe the Green Hill. <laughs> So uh, was there any kind of an opening then, or just that it fell in, it collapsed? Oh, there, no, there was it? a big opening, a very big opening, but your man healed stones in the opening, you see. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, the opening was going down into the ground, wasn't it? No, there was a good slope at that time, a yeah. good slope, you see, yeah. in front of the opening. Yeah. So yeah. he healed it, he healed it all, all the stones into the... It must be nearly all filled up those all the way down there. No, it's going down now. Well, I could pass there now, and I didn't even look. I need to pass that for now. Yeah. Me, could you stand up when you went back in it? I wouldn't know. No. Yeah, you wouldn't know. How would it be? Three or four feet high? Three feet high? Well, it would be three feet anyway. But yeah. I don't know how was it further back. There were mm -hmm. people that went back further than I did, you know. Yeah. And there was no little rooms or little caves or oh, little... I'm not sure who there anyone that can go that first one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'd be afraid yeah. Yeah. at that time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't chance. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Was there a f ever a fort anywhere out this side of it? Fort? No, yeah. only the fort that's round eh? Oh, there's a fourth one. I, I know him. You see the cock of hay now behind? Oh, yeah, on the well, fair it, end. Uh, it broke down. Well, let me add you a tap one, didn't it? Yeah. It broke down now, the field the side of the, of the cock of hay. Yes. And oh, I know it. I'd say it'd be to the left of the cock of hay. I know it, I know where it is. I tap one, didn't it? And, and they were saying like that, it was the same lead. The same tunnel. The same tunnel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right yeah. he, he closed up that about two years ago. Well, I, did yeah, I? Did. I seen it when, the, when it was uh, open now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, I, I, I would be doubtful about that, you know, that should have brought that far, but that maybe. Was. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, I don't know, they'll tell you that they will. They met out the one over there in Castletown was leading a long way. Yeah. yeah. But I just say, I see people were afraid to go back in. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's prepared would you get a flash lamp that time. That's right. Oh, he wouldn't. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's in the machine. Yeah. 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 No big people. No. No. No, no big no. people. 
Yeah. There was a few, I seen a few stones standing in it. There is a headstone in it, all right. There was a few, but was there? the same as the gathering off the land, you know, the stone from people that seed land. There were banks in it. Now this is the fort, that's where the tunnel is. And there's a little fort here. We can see the extent of it. Built up with rocks, piled in by the people of the land. The outer edge of the fort, I think. <coughs> you can see down there the, the beginning of the escape passage. <coughs> now, the, the, the construction of this one is a bit unusual. It goes out here, uh, it would have gone through that fence out the other side to complete the circle. <coughs> but then when you come inside here, there's another wall <coughs> which is about two feet wide and it curves away to the right here and <coughs> you can see part of it on the other side <coughs> you, can, you can see the curve there where it curves away to the right <coughs> now there's a depression down there uh, and that could be part of the uh, escape chamber where the roof has collapsed <coughs> another possibility except that uh, it doesn't exactly fit <coughs> it looks like the wall of a lime kiln <coughs> that somebody in later years um, started to burn lime uh, on top of this lishing which again would be most unusual uh, <coughs> because people had a kind of a superstitious respect for them and they thought there were places where the fairies lived <coughs> and the less you had to do with them the better yeah. this is what they call the tunnel yeah, yeah. Um, and from a man now who was down in it um, <coughs> he said it was about uh, four feet high or maybe three to four feet high same width <coughs> covered over with big flanks yeah. um, and he said it went for the wolf for the, for the river yeah. well that would make sense if it's an escape passage the first thing they'd run short of was water <coughs> and that was the usual thing uh, <coughs> in these farmers houses uh, yeah. that if they were attacked by say by wild animals <coughs> or other people uh, if they were besieged uh, <coughs> they had a secret way uh, down for water yeah. Would you be able to pick up? There's a line running down there um, through the field. Uh, halfway over, then there's another one. Over in the other patch, uh, there's also another one. <coughs> and these would be the divisions uh, between the sections of Rundin. Those are what they call the Quee Lodges. Yeah. Uh, and <coughs> you can see them there. <coughs> now, on a sunny day, they come out better. Yeah. So this is all a Rundale Quee Lodge outfit? Uh, down yes, here. I say all of this line, yes. Uh, was divided, and I think in the other field you can see another one. You can see an another one down here. Yes. yes, and they would be there, I'd say, from <coughs> before the, some of those fences were made. Well, over here is Lishin, and there's the remains of another one over there. Yeah, so that's <coughs> three of them within about 200 yards. And some say that the tunnel from here goes over in that direction, uh -huh. and far out towards the cock of hair, left of that house there on the top of the head. To be up there on that rock. <coughs> well, that would need checking again. Oh, it did. Over here now, uh, you have four hills, <coughs> and you can see two clusters of houses: uh, the upper village uh, and the one lower down. And <coughs> it's a very ancient name, uh, and <coughs> it gets its importance from the fact that it, it's um, mentioned in uh, Saint Patrick's Confessions. Uh, well, that's the name of the document that he wrote. <coughs> there are two genuine documents concerning St. Patrick. Uh, one would be this is confession, and the other one would be the, the letter to Karatika. And um, I'd like to quote you here now from <coughs> an article by Bishop MacDonald, uh, out of the confession. <coughs> there, that's after his escape to Britain, quoting, I saw in the night the vision of a man whose name was Victoricus, coming as it were from Ireland with countless letters, and he gave me one of them. And I read the opening words of the letter, which were the voice of the Irish. And as I read the beginning of the letter, <coughs> I thought that at the same moment I heard the voice of those who were beside the wood of Fogler, which is near the western sea. And thus did they cry, as though with one mouth, we ask you, holy youth, to come and walk among us once more. <coughs> now, there's more written uh, about Silva Fogluti, uh, and... <coughs> 
or when it's turned into uh, <coughs> at least half a dozen different uh, interpretations. <coughs> what we can say about it is that there's an ancient tradition which goes back a long, long way uh, to say that it was from here <coughs> that, uh, that St. Patrick heard the voices of the Irish. <coughs> now, part of the puzzle is when he said, come again and walk among us which he inferred <coughs> that he had been here before. Yeah. Now, <coughs> if he uh, was a slave uh, at Sleeve Mish, uh, it's difficult. To, I don't know how you would answer that one. And again, uh, <coughs> these are where the answers come, and, uh, and they're different. Now, <coughs> where he uh, was captured uh, and where he lived as a slave, even where he was born, uh, it, all those are disputed questions. Yeah. Well, now, the, the heights over Fohol there were supposed to be wooded. Because Fohel is named as Underwood, Fohel, so that would be the height. True. Well, <coughs> in fact, some would say that the whole area from here to Kilala, past Kilala, out by Frostpatrick, that all of that was a wooded area yeah. uh, of ancient oak. And, and had blades in and out here and there, breaks in the forest, wasn't that? True, yes. Yeah. Yes, well, yeah. uh, that could be. But, uh, as I say, the, the, the question is rather complicated. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> and, you know, like Shakespeare said, there wasn't it he that... Um, Fools rush in somewhere, sometimes, where angels fear to tread. Right. <laughs> and there's a lot of angels on this ground. Yeah, well, some of them are, uh, as you mentioned there, uh, Bishop Thomas MacDonald, and there's a man called Bury and Kelly and <coughs> O'Reilly and Hanson. They have founded their theories on St. Patrick and Silver for Cooty and uh, mm. Ashley, isn't it? Uh, <coughs> yes. Oh, um, yeah, as I say, <coughs> there are you named at least <coughs> six names there, and each one has his own. Yeah. Uh, and that's not all of them. But he's supposed to have escaped too from Kilala, isn't he? Well, <coughs> there again, you see, <coughs> it depends on what you mean by the Western Sea. Some of them would claim that, <coughs> having been born in uh, England or Scotland, that for him, the Western Sea would be the Irish Sea. Yeah. Now, maybe, maybe not. Well, he was on a boat, we read, mm -hmm. carrying greyhounds or dogs for the continent, and I believe <coughs> Kilala had a market for these in France or somewhere in those days, hadn't it? That's true. <coughs> But yeah. you see there again, uh, the ones who don't agree with that uh, would say, why come this far west to go to France? That it would be much easier to go from Wexford or from that side of the country. So uh, no matter what you put up, <coughs> there's an opposite side to it. Yeah. Uh, but <coughs> St. Patrick himself said, yes, uh, he escaped by ship. <coughs> there were dogs, there were greyhounds, yeah. uh, or wolfhounds, I suppose uh, you'd yeah. say. Um, <coughs> now, it's absolutely certain that St. Patrick crossed the Shannon at least three times. Yeah, but it was trade from Kerala too. Kerala was a uh, trading town even in those days. Yeah, <coughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. Um, that's true. Uh, in fact, we could even venture further and say that long, long before St. Patrick's time, 2,000 years before that, <coughs> some of the first people to arrive in Ireland uh, came Kilala. along the west yeah, coast. Yeah. And there's evidence of that in some of the, the um, <coughs> monuments or artifacts and so on that they yeah. left uh, along here. Yeah. Um, like one of the professors who used to teach us uh, in, <coughs> in Manus, when he came to difficult subjects, <coughs> he'd say, gentlemen, we're in the bog again today. <coughs> and we're a bit in the bog now. This um, article uh, by Bishop MacDonald uh, is in the annual of the North Mayo Historical and Archaeological Society for 80, 1982. Um, <coughs> and he sums up there uh, something about the sources and the different people who had written <coughs> and the different views they had and their interpretations of what silver for, for Pluto meant. Um, <coughs> and there's about 15 pages in it. Um, <coughs> there's devotion to St. Patrick here. There's a holy well. Uh, there's a pillar stone, <coughs> a standing stone, uh, which goes back and was probably Christianized um, <coughs> after St. Patrick came. So the devotion to St. Patrick and the tradition, as I say, um, <coughs> the Western one is the oldest. Yeah, there's a lot of schools around that from too, I think. Uh, true. Yeah. <coughs> true. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we can sum it up as any of the others. Yeah. And it's older than both. This house here is uh, Farrell's, a Fohel. At the back of it was a shop that serviced the village for or the townland of Fohel for years and years. Here also lived in the 40s and 50s John Burke, who taught in Caramore Lacken National School and who also became a divisional inspector. Over there was an old house on the left where Dr. McNulty used to hold his clinics.
townland of Fohill goes away over here this road. It's both sides of the road. Now we've reached the boundary here. This is the ditch going up here, the fence. Over there is uh, Fohill. Here's the fence going up then, winding way out to the right here. And going across. And then turning left of that tractor there and out to the top of the hill. The tractor is in um, Cadden Thrasner. Left of the ditch is uh, Fohill, the townland of Fohill. And here we see the boundary on the other side, that ditch going away up there. On the right here is Fohill. On the left I think is Cashel. Townland of Fohill. Sedimentary rock. It's not limestone. No, no, it's, a, it's a not shale either, is it? It's sedimentary. Uh, it may be a very old, a very old rock. It, may, it could be a very old rock. It could be, in fact, uh, these could be a certain layers of lava. An igneous rock from the volcano. Rock. Yeah. Volcanic type. A volcanic type of rock. Yeah. Uh, possibly, or sedimentary. Is that a volcanic or sedimentary? I don't know where they got these stones because in, the, in my lifetime I've never seen, you know, a head of them in quarries getting them that limp. No, and... Uh, That's probably going down a few feet. Not typical of the stone that you get around the... Here. Uh, there is yeah. a, a, a rock outcrop which stretches on the seashore at my head it could come in and right goes up right up to... So it may well be that these stones uh, they were quarried in some some place, some place after Maybe many miles away too. Many miles away and transport. Busy man Christianizing pagan people, and uh, I don't think he would personally be too bothered about putting up stones to commemorate what he did. It he could be done by maybe some of us there. Uh, yeah, well, if they, were, if they did, they'd have crosses or something now, or some uh, Christian yeah. sign on, wouldn't they? I'm inclined to go for the Ordnance Survey. The first ordinance survey was started in 1828 by, and the team here in this area was a man called O'Connor and a man called Donovan. Now Donovan was headquartered in Castle Bar or up there and O'Connor was the man in the field and it was known as the Down Survey. The reason it's called the Down Survey is the man who actually Donovan and uh, O'Connor were historians in their own right. I would say yeah, there is a reason for these stones. And he associated them with battles fought and won or lost. And uh, he says in relation to this particular stone that it was to commemorate the defeat of the Danes. The Danes tried several over many years and uh, the Northmen or Vikings tried uh, several, uh, made several attempts to gain a foothold in Ireland. Uh, in Bay. Them was here in Lacton yeah. Bay. Yeah. And uh, the date he gives, or somebody gives, I'm not sure now, a recollection, it's been many years since I've read it, was uh, about uh, 985, maybe 25 years before from Tar. Yeah. Uh, there about. And that the stone was put up to commemorate the defeat of the day. Yeah. Uh, and that battle. And he, O'Connor, gives 
no weight at all to the theory that it's in any way associated with St. Patrick's Missionary Activity. Yeah. So, uh, that was called the Battle of Lachan, wasn't it? Yes, the Battle no. of Lachan. There's also a burial ground way down here. Yes, well, he, he, he refers to that in his letters. And, uh, the his, Green? His theory was, the one at Green Hill. Yeah. Uh, in those days, they were quite chivalrous uh, in battle. They'd call a truce to bury their dead. Yeah. At the end, they, maybe took, they probably took, they took hostages, very likely, of the day and let them go home about their business. Yeah. And the hospital was kept as, as a guarantee of them. So they buried uh, one group, the Rainstone Degree, or the Irish buried in the Green Hill. On the other side, buried over in a place called uh, Puller Ribble, which is out on the head of Kilcommon there. It is, yeah. Uh, a skelp. A skelp. Uh, that's a, a theory. Or, uh, that's more than a theory, because they have I've seen the red stand and... They were burial ground, undoubtedly. Yeah. Uh, but whether it's, uh, it's whether the, the, the burials that arose from the, the people were killed in, in, uh, in battle here. Yeah. The battles in those days would be pretty bloody affairs. Yeah. It was the uh, axe and... Sword and... Sword and... Knife, yeah. And yeah. Maybe stone axe. Yeah. And uh, with the... The Battle of Lacken, the, the bur two burial grounds are tied yeah. in, yeah. and with the... With Her information from the old Mrs. Franklin there, but she wasn't too uh, accurate. She says that she thought that uh, it was the bodies of invaders coming in here that were defeated or were buried down there at the Green Hill. Now, she hadn't heard of Donovan nor of that other man you mentioned. Yes, O'Connor. O'Connor, yeah. Yeah. Well, and the well is here. The uh, well is in pretty dark condition, isn't it? It is. It's uh, something needs to be done with it. Yeah. Why that proper exception? No, it's proper exception. No, it's not. done, I don't know whether they got them to baptize each other, but it seemed an awful job for uh, one man to baptize 1,500. Yeah, well, of course, day. could he get them to submerge themselves in the water, maybe? Well, that's uh, possibly, uh, I suppose, much the same as uh, our Lord in the Jordan. Yeah, uh, mass baptism. Ma mass baptism. Yeah. Well, of course, if he lived around here, that would come easier to him if he had been a prisoner for three years or a slave or whatever, you know, that might have come a lot easier to him. Yes, uh, certainly it would have, uh, he would have developed this, uh, an opportunity of thinking out his, uh, his tactics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would have a great advantage, wouldn't he? Advantage in that yeah. Supernatural influence could have been walking there anyhow. Yeah. Uh, which would have been reported from here. I've never heard of any, but there's been a, there's a great faith by a number of people that I know. A great faith in There's been an odd one report from Sir Cummins, you know. Yes, uh, 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 the Just the you say, yeah. Kelly, it stood up pretty well. I thought 20 years ago it was going to collapse any time.
Yeah. Made more happen with the people. Especially since it was the first place that St. Patrick is supposed to have begun as a mission river. Yes, there isn't, yeah. there isn't any doubt at all, I think, <laughs> in my mind, and uh, that uh, I'm not a person to agree with everything that other people say, but I, I, I think it's all important whether St. Patrick was herded swine over here or above in our Antrim, it doesn't matter. But it's certain that he commenced his missionary career here. That's pretty well authenticated. That's when, when end the sun, when, when Owley was at the point of death, and he was dividing up his principality. He couldn't get agreement of his sons as to the division, but he got them to agree to accept the decision of the High King of Ireland, who was a relative of theirs. Yeah. And they agreed to that on the journey to Tara. And while they were at Tara, Saint Patrick lit the path of fire in the plain. Then Patrick came across the Tara, and when he was at Tara, he met Enda, and they recognized each other. In other words, they had met. Whether that's what happened here, or whether it happened in, in Antrim, where Enda might have been in fostage with his uncle, I don't know, but it's not important. But Enda brought him here, and commenced his ac missionary activity here, and he that. Captain Tressler, the quarter crossways, or the crossways quarter, could also mean contrary people, I suppose. Uh, Chuck Tressler here, come across one another. Well, Donovan has it down as the crossways quarter, and here we see it. Now that's uh, Upper Cannon Trasney, Cannon Trasney, and uh, Lower Cannon Trasney, out on the north side. And this is the contour line, 100 feet over sea level. And this is the southern tip of the um, townland at um, Castle Lake, and there's the road going through to Banha. Now this, uh, there's no road here. But there is one now. There's one. The, this one is not on the map. It goes on to the present road and down into uh, Banagher again. It was made uh, 50 years ago. <coughs> now that Castle Lake down in the south, southern corner is also called Banagher Lake locally. That would roughly be the uh, direction of the present day new road, as they call it, that comes up here. Now that's Lacken Strand on the west side. Crosswise quarter. And this is what it looks like. Now the fence that goes away, uh, this is the road, it's both sides of the road. Well, when we go over there a few yards. See that ditch there on the right? It goes away down to the right. It's Karen Trasna then both sides of the road there. <coughs> now this is looking ahead from the east side, looking west. And there's the boundary that drain there. And on the right there where these reeds are grown was once Cash Lake, as the people call it, Banhar Lake, I believe. That fence running there through the bushes away over towards the road is the townland boundary. Now, uh, coming across the road here, now going up there, uh, left of that is, or that drain going up there is the townland boundary between Banagher and Cadentrasna on the left, Cadentrasna on the right, Banagher. That's what the country looks like. Now this is the new road up by Collins's on the left. And um, it's about 50 years old. This would be Upper Cadentrasne, this village here now we're looking at. Most of the houses that were in it in 1838 are not here now. 
and over there on the right was a quarry. I think they used to call it Quarry Hill. Stones came from there. We see the wreckage of old houses or the remains of them. People have immigrated from here and changed up around Palmstown and Mine. This was the new road built. This is down as uh, Cabin Trasna, or Donovan of 1838 survey has it down as the Crosswise Quarter, coming from Trasna. In 1838 it contained almost 230 acres. Since the last revision the acreage has increased to 237 acres. This townland also included over 3 acres of water which was down there uh, in Banagher Lake, or Cash Lake as it should, it should properly be called. Half of Cash Lake. Uh, this lake was known locally as Banner Lake. In 1838 it was the property of Richard Irwin, who was living in Dublin. His agent was George Irwin of Greenawn, Ballinaya. Uh, 33 farmers and 6 cottiers lived here in 18, around 1838. They grew oats and potatoes. Carol Trashner was in the south of the village. Well now, down there is uh, Upper Carol Trashner. Here, this village Behind me here is Cabin Trasna, and farther down is Lower Cabin Trasna. Three villages in the townland of Cabin Trasna, all named Cabin Trasna. Uh, the villages are 100 feet over sea level. In 1856, according to the Griffith valuation, the uh, immediate lesser was Mrs. Erwine. The occupiers were Henry Robinson, Thomas Lotney, Lackey Munley, John Munley, Michael Munley, Lackey Munley, Patrick Murphy, John Lochney, Anthony Duffy, John Duffy, Michael Duffy, Anthony Duffy, John Duffy, Michael Duffy, John Munley, Michael Munley, Michael Collins, Patrick Collins, Bridget Ford, John Lochney, James Murphy, John McNulty, Patrick Walsh. 23 families. The number of families declined here by 10 during the famine years. Now, Michael Duffy that lived here in about 1856 had a pound here for caging up wandering animals etc. Uh, Cadden Trasna is also mentioned in Simington's book of survey and distribution. It had 108 acres in those days and it was owned by Richard Burke and McHugh and McDaniel, three uh, different kinds of people. The boundary wall down there now, isn't it? Yes. To the right down there, isn't it? Yes. All the way down as far as the road. Down as far as the road. And the caves are somewhere down on the hill there. Down on the hill here, yes. They call it Styra to there. Styra, yeah. 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 Now how about this other boundary that goes down here? It's um, one down to meet Carrickdale of Townland. Yeah. It goes all the way down to the stone wall. It, it goes down to the stone wall there. Can we see it from here? You can see the stone wall just up here. Oh yeah. And uh, that's the the, the the pillar stone. Oh yeah. Well, that's in the next townland, isn't it? Yeah, it's in 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 Banagher townland. Yeah. I'm looking at this stuff. All over here is yes. Now, you want me to? Oh, you to face the news. Mm. The roadway leading up there. That's where Pat Robertson originally lived. The Mayo footballer. Yeah. Supposed to have the longest kick and croak pair, longest free kick and croak pair. Well, it's still supposed to hold the record anyway. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That blue house down there. That blue house here, that was his original house. Well, it was the last one he was living in, the wasn't it? The last one he lived in. So the original one would be... The original one is just down here where the staples are. In fact, it's not now, but it was here when it has shown. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Now... Now there's the townland boundary going away down. No, that's where the caves are, Stoyre. And we're in the east, uh, the west and now looking down towards Lackenstrand, that drain there, as it moves down and winds down towards the statue on the strand, is the boundary between Fohill and uh, Cadden Trasna. Over here is Cadden Trasna, all the way as far as the stone wall over there. Way over there. Of Townland and Kevin yeah. Tell us up here now. Um, well, that's Mosford now. It was originally it was Duffers. Yeah. Now it's Mosford. The Mosford here that was too. Here yeah, they had the pound. Yes, the, the pound was here now and was owned by the 
Duffy no. fan then? Well, Michael Duffy that's down in the hill 56. Yeah, Michael Duffy. Yeah. Uh, what his great grandfather is, present crowd now. Yeah. The Murphy yeah. family. Yeah. Tell him this. Yes. Inside here, that's where he's from. Yeah. And the water running down there. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. The phone was here and the uh, water coming down. And as I understand it wasn't a... It was a, a thing that you had to have water in the pound. Cattle there, they weren't fed, but they weren't allowed to be thirsty. Yeah. They always had facilities to drink. Yeah. So, it was one of the things necessary to a pound. One of the things necessary. Yeah, one of the necessities the of a pound. Yeah. 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 What was the farm? Holding stray donkeys mostly, was it? Uh, stray animals. And, and then the other thing, if, at the time, if a neighbor's animal went in in your field, well, you had the option of putting them in the pound. Yeah. And he'd have to redeem them, then pay so much on them to redeem them. And if he didn't, would they be said or served or what happened? Uh, they'd be there for so long, and if they weren't claimed, they could be auctioned and sold. Oh, That's I see. Nine days. Nine um, days, was that? Yeah. Nine days, you could auction. Yeah. Oh? 25 now. Or would say 20. This village up here? Yeah, this is um, Lower Cairntra. known as Lower Cairntra last night. Yeah. What known in Irish as Yeah. Um, about 20 years ago, some of the last inhabitants left it. They built houses away up... Further up the village. Further up the village. Yeah. Built new houses. Oh, yeah. Some of them immigrated up to different townlands up around time. So, yeah, some of them yeah. immigrated. Right. Cash, was it? Some then? of them immigrated from right Cash. And yeah. Yeah. The houses were like these. This yeah, one up here, they were tax. ordinary thatched houses. A uh, room and a kitchen mostly. Some of, Dad wanted them two rooms and a kitchen. Yeah. Ordinary yeah. all thatched houses. There was no stated house at all at that time. As far up the village then here was Bailan Campa, was that right? Uh, yeah, Bailan Bailan Campa was further up. Yeah. Uh, no one in the area has opened the kitchen the camera. That's the house of uh, Pat Robertson, Maliki Cairn. Oh, this here is... Uh, well, you saw the cave, Jimmy, isn't it? This is the cave here, and known as Thayra. Thayra. All the Thayra here, is it? Yeah, All the Thayra here. Known as Thayra. Yeah. And the incident, the incident for this cave, I came out first about ten years ago. Did you? And it was open. Yeah. And I went down into it. Yeah. And I went about three years over that way, or four three years, see. And it was built on both sides, flagged on the bottom and flagged on the top. There was, no, there was no muck or anything, you know, concrete or anything, you know what I mean? Yeah. Could you stand in it? Stand no, up. no, I was on my hands and knees. Yeah. When I went back to the beach, I got afraid of it. <laughs> Could you stand up when you went? Did it, was it the same? It was the same all the way as far as I went for three or four years. Yeah, yeah. And they returned. Yeah. When I came back again. But was anyway, it dry? Dry in the bottom? Dry in the bottom, dry in the top. Yeah. Uh, everything perfect. Clean well as a pin. Yeah. And I came back again and I went. But finally, about two years after that, an animal fell into it. So we turned around and took the animal out and Got lump of stones and threw it into the road layers you see there now. Yeah. 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 yeah, the hole is there, all right. Yeah, yeah. Something look, look, look at the building. Something there. I do, yeah. See the side of there. Now this cave goes on this direction, towards the wall. Now this, looking at it here, it's a raised fortification. Uh, there seemed to have been some kind of a raised fortification here in the time gone by. It's higher than the rest of the land. Called Styra, or the stairs, I don't know why. There seemed to be some um, fortification in that cave there. Would uh, account for an escape hatch. Now it goes out into the next field too, and the cave is supposed to go on down towards uh, the sea, or over towards Kushtanagriha in that direction. Styra. Cash McGee, down to the left of that. That's from your grandfather. Yeah. Grandfather. Left of Kushlanagriha, is it? Yeah, it's Kushlanagriha. It's yeah. to the left of Kushlanagriha, down probably five or six hundred years. That's, the that's where they think this, this cave comes out. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what's nearly further from here. Supposed to be. Um, it was known as um, Lobby um, Gronia yeah. and, and Germa. There was the food, Dermot and Gronia were supposed to have the bed there. Where? Uh, oh, down there? Yeah, in the, in the old castle. Yeah. Good, because that's another uh, connection with the sea and you found here. Yeah.
No one. Boys on the two. This road here is called the New Road, isn't it, Paddy? Yes. yes. What year? 1932, is it? Between 30 and 32. You would say it was 27, 28, you know? 28. 28. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or sometime around then, anyway. Around then, around It's not mapped on the present day map. No. Yeah. This road here, though, to that, to that house, what could be in the 32, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, from that hand, it'll be 32. From, from, the, from that hand, it'll be 32. This will be 27 or 28. Yeah. yeah. From here down? Yeah. This this road here now was only a path. Oh it yeah. Was, it, this was a path. It was the road here was originally a path. Yeah. It was used by the fishermen by the the whole Chandrasni village. Uh, at that time it was mostly fishing and farming. Yeah. More fishing than farming. The farms are small. Yeah. And it was used uh, for going to that land. Are mostly used for fishing. And going to church too wasn't it? Going to church then, um, Belgeary people town on the way back there, they used this going to church. Did they use it for going to the bog too? Going to the bog. Yeah. For mostly the, the turf and list of their own bog they used yeah. it from here. Now when they came to the cross, or to where the crossroads is today here, did they go up there and down the other? No, no, they went across the path here. Yeah, here. The, the path, the right away here, see the steps there? The oh, that's the right away all the yeah, way down. That, that's right the right away over, down all the way down to the, the strand for going to, going to church. Oh, I see. You see, that's the whole right away there. Oh, yes. Yes, and yes. then there's another right away above again. <laughs> That's a right away, very old right away, mapped on the map too. See the stores there? Yeah. Yeah. I see them there. Yeah. See the steps there. I'll go back at the old house. Yeah. At the yeah. uh, wall of the old house behind yeah. there. Yeah. It's going to the, to the left, the left of the, the trees below. Between the, the, you see where the sheep are? Yeah. Just right up at the bottom. Now the well? Yeah. Just right here. Yeah. Known as Tubber and the Clock. Yeah. yeah. Um, supplied water to the whole town and the Cairn Trassy, upper and lower. Yeah. Uh, tradition says the French came this way in 1798 and they drank from the well. And the well, the water was so cold as they called it the rock, the rock well, Tabernacloche. Yeah, Tabernacloche, Tabernacloche. Yeah. Now, Forge Village is down on that Forge place. Village is down here then. No. There was two forges there in that village. Yeah, we'll be down there later. Up yeah. here was where the French were camped, up there on them houses, wasn't yeah, it? Yes, up, 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 up on the, the height above where the French... So the they'd be coming down here to drink all right, wouldn't yes. they? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So that village up there now was called uh, Balian Khampa, wasn't Balian it? Balian Khampa. The town of the camps. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people wouldn't agree that all the camps of the French were there, so they wouldn't. They no, were, no, no. They no. were scattered around that, uh, yeah. cloth, where was it, Crookmore and... Crookmore and... Uh, and, and the Binya. Out at the head. Out yeah. at your common head. Yeah. Up. Now this here is... Cadden uh, Trasna Upper, <coughs> one of the Collinses, and they had a forge up here where these two men are standing here. There were two forges in mm. Forge Village. Forge Village, um, in Lower Cadden Trasna. Yeah, in the townland. Yeah. In townland Lower Cadden Trasna. This was, um, forge was Tom Collins, was the man that worked here, and it was a traditional handed down thing. His father before him was grandfather. All worked on the same forge. Yeah. Uh, there was another forge here now, just across the road here. Another pair of houses, I suppose they'd be distant relations. Yeah. They had another forge there, and there it was a traditional thing too. Yeah. So that's why this uh, part of the, part of the uh, townland was called, townland was called um, Forge Village. Forge Village. You remember seeing this forge here? Yes, oh, I did. We often got our horses shot here, all the work we ever did was here. Yeah. At that time, you deal with it with them the one blacksmith and the man you, you went to you kept on you going, kept on going to him. yeah that was you don't that. remember seeing the one that was in here no well, the, the, the walls were there but i never seen any work done yeah. how long ago since this one was in operation it had been what um that'd be roughly 25 30 years ago 25 or 30 years ago yeah yeah yeah, yeah. right quarry into here for house yeah freestone quarry there that there was stones quarried for houses. Both sides of the road, isn't it? Um, both sides of the road. Yeah. Village of Cadentrasna Lower. Cadentrasna Lower. Although it's higher than the one that's up there, isn't it? It's higher, and it's to the north of it too. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's also called a uh, different name, isn't it's it? It's called Malihampa. Yeah. The French were supposed to have camped here in 1798. Yeah. On their way to... Tilala. Tilala. 
No, the exact location of where the camp would be. Uh, back, probably yeah. up here at Holbeck, yeah, up on this where hill. Up that green field up on the hill there. Where that white horse is in there. It's grazing, there. I can see him from and here. Right, yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. in there. That's where they camp, surely. Yeah. Uh, this village has been peopled, I think, are inhabited by contrary people. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. The land, um, the houses were congested. The land was congested, and there was a lot of threats pursued. Fowl and geese and one thing and another, and that caused a lot of friction among them. Well, they had a rundale here, too. It was all rundale. It was yeah. all, the whole townland was all rundale at one time. Yeah. Maybe uh, it's supposed to be called uh, the crosswise townland, you know, situated crosswise. Maybe it was because they were also contrary. Yeah, probably so. Yeah. Probably so. Yeah. But then they weren't really that bad altogether, were they? Uh, no. No. Yeah. In other words, their back was a lot worse than their bite. <laughs> when it came... When it came to a point, anyone got into trouble or anyone got sick, the whole village was in yeah. a help out. In other words, when the crunch came, they were there. When the crunch came, they were there. Even neighbors weren't yeah. talking. They came in and helped other. Well, it was, all, it was all kind of petty stuff, though, right. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Now, down here is the site of the the house where the year of the French... Yeah, the year made. of the French, where the eviction scene, where the eviction scene was. Yeah, one of the shoots for... Yeah, for the, the eviction scene. Yeah, down there. And, uh there was a house belonging to who? Uh, it was Murphy's. Murphy's. Loose, Loose, as we call him, wasn't it? Yeah, man. What was Lewis. his right name? Pat, Mur Pat, Murphy. Pat Murphy. He was yeah. nicknamed Lewis yeah. Murphy. And that would be a house that looked exactly like the original houses that were here exactly, in 1790. Exactly, exactly. And everything inside the old dresser and the, the, the bed with the canopy over it, known yeah. as a, as the a taster. taster. Right, it was there. It was all there. The whole thing was there. As it was probably in 1790. And they had us over the fireplace. And they had us over the fireplace yeah, and yeah. the whole lot. The whole lot. Yeah. And the line over the fireplace. The fishing line over the, hung over the fireplace. Yeah. 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 And the beam at the end of the house. You know. So, the village of Cadden Plaster. We're back again at the quarry and looking up at where the caves were. Styra. And here is Forge Village, or Karantrasna Upper. And there we have a scene from the year of the French, 1981, some of the makeup artists and the cast, and all the gear outside Pat Murphy's house. There we see the arc lamps shining on it, even though it was a bright summer's day. And here we see some of the RTE equipment and trucks and caravans for carrying their equipment around. And there are the camps set up to house the artists. 200 years almost after the French landed here, there were camps here about 200 years before. And there we see the situation of Pat Murphy's house down there, where the eviction scene took place. Here is more of the equipment being gathered by the Kalala police there. Once again, another look at Balian Kampa, camps in it the second time, 200 years later. Banahar, named after the pointed rocks or the pointed hills. 
which we find hard to find in this townland. And that's what it looks like there. And there's the road from um, Cadden Trasten way over to Balagari and down to the coastline. This one comes down from Cashel. And that's the site of Old Banner School, built 1892. And uh, there's a road going up there called Doyle's Road or Doyle's Boating or Boher Doyle. <coughs> Here's the site of a fort and there's the site of a pound in the next townland, Belagari. <coughs> there was a village here and here's the site of the Standing Stone. And somewhere around there was the site of the first school or orig original school that was here. That's the contour line, a hundred feet over sea level. Ahead there is the townland of Banhar. From that bridge forward, there is the drain, the boundary line, on the right of that, Banhar. On the left, I think, is Castle, and there again on the left, Banhar. That's the townland in the foreground. Banagher. According to O'Donovan, it comes from peaks, pointed hills, or pointed rocks. Ah, uh, they should be up there somewhere, but it's hard to find them. Pointed hills are the pointed rocks. It had almost 131 acres in 1838. It belonged to John and Charles Robinson. Uh, they lived up there, and that uh, right at the school there, somewhere. And uh, 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 this land was allotted to their ancestor uh, as a debenture in the Cromwellian confiscation. They lived in Banagher and sublet part of Banagher to tenants at 30 shillings an acre. It had 10 acres of uncultivated land and eight, 8 acres of sand hills. Well, the uncultivated land would be over here, and I don't know exactly where the sand hills would be, probably at the far end of the townland. Uh, in 1856, the immediate lesser was Anne Gallagher. She had half of it leased. She subletted to tenants uh, Philip Lynch, Richard Welsh, Anne Gallagher, Anne Gallagher, that was herself, I suppose. She owned an old mill somewhere in the townland. I think it was over somewhere in that direction. Edward, Rob Edward Robinson owned half of this townland. He had a national schoolhouse. Now, the schoolhouse uh, would be over in that direction, I think. Now, according to the reports of the Commissioners of Public Construction, there was a boys' school and a girls' school somewhere around here, and Thomas Hoban was the master. Well, uh, this was the townland of Banagher, 1856. the boundary, crosses the road here, and away up right of this wall, way out the top of the hill. On the left is Cadden Trasna, on the right banner. <laughs> New house going up there, another one has been built over there, and uh, the public house that has replaced uh, the public house that was here belonged to Needham's or Lafferson's. This is the Kerry Man's Inn. Now, on the left of this drain is public area, on the right is Banagher, and down there at the bottom runs a river, and there is the remains of a 
Kvar med dem, det är inte för långt. Jag tänker att jag har prövat att bli sedan några år. Det är inte bara en bil, men det är